Right, this is going to be another episode of Hot Take Point Made. The only thing is, since we did episodes during the other parts of the tournament, I actually don't remember off the top of my head. Did we have hot takes that were related to the rest of the major? Like, did have people? Did people have them? Do you remember? We can always review this in the future, but I'm just trying to think. Did we? Did anyone I have like a major related one? I think I had one I'd... saying VP will get to the top four, or maybe that was before the major. Okay. And then Nvidia stepped in and whatever, like okay. they fucked it all up. Okay. So, all right. So the my take blew up in my face. The one about Simple would have a chance to win the major with Navi, and that they should get rid of Ema because Navi are not winning the major with Ema. They've obviously won the major, <laughs> and I still stand by the fact that they could have done well with Simple. I still think that they could have. I'm gonna no, double down. No, no. Here's the thing: you might All listen. Majors, you can absolutely double down, but you have to also take the L that that is literally a factual, bona fide, one hundred percent L. That is like, and it's even insane because you are right. Like I've never seen an L so quickly come and also so decisively. Like that is just <laughs> like you know. Listen, it's. Uh, We've had, we've had a lot of bad takes on this show. Obviously, we've thrown out hot takes, but it's rare that you do. Listen, I can't lie, Maui. Here's the first thing to obviously say. You did get fucked. Like, they won the least rounds of any team to ever win a major, the least percentage of rounds, guys. They won slightly less than 50% of the rounds. Like, that's ridiculous. Then you look who they beat. Like, it's a ridiculous run of teams. It was basically only FaZe was the good team they beat, and then FaZe took care of better teams. So, like, no, here's the thing. There's all sorts of extenuating circumstances, but that is a hell of an L to take. I can't lie. <laughs> That it's is. a massive role. I know, it's, it's a, a good... Role. Here's the yeah. thing, though. It's fun, though. Yeah, that's one where you don't even mind as much. I, I, I mean, the, the thing is that, obviously, And people, Ema played like shit, to be fair, so what do you want? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Ema, Ema still played very badly as an individual. Sure, he's saying, like, okay, I'm, I'm a support player now. I'm just doing what the, the team needs. It's like, dude, like, you're in a position where still you're supposed to do better individually. You're not supposed to just get carried by JL and Wonderful in every single game. That being said... Some people will come back to that statement and be like, "Look at how look at how stupid I was." Obviously, I was wrong. I said that they wouldn't win the major. I'd be I'd be hard pressed to find anybody that even had Navi in their pickums. When people actually had to put their money where their mouth was, nobody put Navi in. That's why nobody nobody of all the influencers, nobody of all, Kasa, did you put them in your pickums to win the whole thing? Because I know you wrote one 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 DM, but you could write anything in a in, DM. In the, in, okay, I I mean. Are you calling me a liar or a manufacturer of like, like, like you could, fucking I could write, facts? I, okay, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write final. eight DMs to the right now. Astralis could win the major, Liquid could win the major. So but. basically, technically, by extension, you're calling Torin, Torin a liar as well. Nice. You lose your take, you become a fucking loser in this show, and then you call us liars. <laughs> no, no, like, he means, those... he means you didn't have the winning. Now, here's the problem, Kasad. No, no, the thing is, like, listen, listen. Me, in, me and in you had them, yeah, we had them in the final. We didn't have the winning, though. Yes. But and, and them in the final. your thing from Discord, we earlier, yeah, true, did say earlier on before the tournament, or whatever, like maybe they could like win the major or whatever. But that doesn't count when you're then in the pick and don't put them. So, like, here's the thing I'll say this I'll take half credit because we are some of the only people to have them in the final. Everyone else told me they were going to lose the fucking Echo, Eternal Fire, you fucking bombs. But we didn't have them winning, bro. Like, even I, even, look, I'm the biggest Select CB stand of all time, and even I was like, well, how are they going to beat fucking Fears Vitality on Team Spirit? Like, so no one really had a winning. Come on, you can only take partial credit for that one. Finals right? of my pickems. Yeah. I can show you the proof of that if you want to pick okay. them to see somehow. The thing is, I had them there. Was and it, I also, your like, Team Spirit beating them, though? Yeah, I had the Team Spirit beat them in the finals. That's what and, uh, Yeah, I mean, that's a logical take because we played them. We played them before the major, we practiced them. And they look so sharp and so like good on practice. Okay. And I was like, that's when I wrote the tutorial. Like, listen, these guys, they just might like, they just might win the major. Like, you know, without saying anything crazy, just say like, they're playing good. Like, yeah. you know, just a casual chat. And that's the screenshot. Therefore, yeah, not bad. I had my trust in them, Maui. <laughs> and you wanted to And by the it. way, even before and people ask. On email, before people ask, because they do the same thing when I do those DMs, where like I have some amazing DMs where I sort of encourage someone who then turned their career around, right? Everyone just goes, oh, but you just sent a million. No, he didn't. Because I literally did not send me like 50 teams. He probably sent me like one other team that might be good. He didn't say with the majors. So that's, there's no, that is not true. He actually did really, that was like a mad call. I mean, it was just from practice, sure. But actually, I'll give, I'll give you partial credit for that, sure. Like you feel on the server, those people, like they are playing sharp Counter Strike and good Counter Strike. That's what happened before when you play like team like Astralis back in the day, right? 2018, 19, whatever. Like you feel they are playing proper Counter Strike. 
you know, VP is the same same team. Like they are playing proper country. You feel sure. it to the server. And you know, okay, these guys are are good. Like you go through through the through the scrim and you learn something from them. In, and then then you realize, listen, okay, these guys sure. know what they're doing, so they might have a shot at this. So that's how I came up with it and messaged Duncan with it. Okay, right. Let's do it. What, okay then, Kasat. Since you are the prophet, apparently. Give us the first hot take because I've got one coming in later. That listen, I have, I have one. Rant, so come on, hit me with listen, it. Listen, listen. I on. have one that people are going to like. Of course, you'll get with it. Come on. Come on. The first one, but what I was going to do was like. You're doing it right now. What, listen, what do you mean listen, you were going listen, to do? You're doing it right I'm, now. I'm leading, leading up to it, man. I'm leading up to it. I'm okay. He, he gets a fake I one was, in, then builds off. I was, real. Okay, keep going then. I was going to say, like, if uh, Hooksy will not play another major with Nico, but. I switched it up and say like if Nico plays another major, he should bench Hooksy, himself. Like, no, I will stop talking to him. <laughs> I won't talk no, to him that's anymore. So mental. <laughs> that, that might actually that's not even a hot take. It's just mental in it. Like why? 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 Why do you have to it's suffer like, because if, of that? If you don't fucking learn your lesson in three fucking major cycles. Where he fucked up the veto twice, and I don't believe the Taz. Oh, sure. Vita. I sure. don't believe it. And the one with the Fnatic veto, the third one they didn't even qualify for. Yep. And you still don't learn your lesson and use your magical influence on fucking G2 to kind of get yourself in a position to be in a good spot to win the fucking major next time, next cycle, or be in a better spot. Then I'm not even going to fucking bother talking to him anymore. That's it. That's my whole take. Okay, right. I want you to address this first, most thing because I don't even know where I don't even know should I go in the game. I don't know where to go approach this from. I, I admit I didn't even see that one coming. So, what do you think of the idea that it's not even that like he won't just play with Nico again? If it's the other way around, he's reversed it to he's punishing Nico for the negative. If Nico does dare play another major with this guy, then Kasad Nico's dead to him. It's just I'm never going to talk to him again. It's over. Uh, it's it's so it's so funny that you would just throw away your friendship with somebody <laughs> for the, I, the, the I'm career so decisions. So mad like that. that I'll do that. So mad. Go. Sorry. It's how you actually it's, do know that you love CS though in a mad way. Yeah, I I uh, I like it. I you, you put something on the line there. Finally, for uh, for the hook team, like the, the fact that he needs to go on this team or something needs to change about G two. I I have I have takes to go with this on top of it. But just to address this one a little bit more, I do I do feel like the way in general that people have just taken it seems like people are just taking bullets for hooksy right now like every time there's something coming at him like taz is like oh i did the veto for i did the veto for hooksy i think pekka even said that wasn't just a pr thing for for what taz said with about that about that veto like the fact that swanee even came back from the grave to say that he's done the vetoes in the past also for g2 it's like everybody is just defending him to such a crazy degree and i get that he was there for you guys when you won your biggest titles in the organization's history and for Katowice and Cologne, but there's a lot of in-game leaders out there right now that I think you also could have won those titles with. And one of them just won the MFing major. All I'll say is this, I know what you mean by that angle as well. Like, it feels like at this point in time, if Nico goes in the fucking toilet in the boot camp place at G2 and stinks it up with a massive Cleveland fucking steamer, and then he comes out and then someone goes, fucking stinks there, then Taz goes, I did that. It's like, well, yeah. you, you, you weren't in there, though. It was just him, though. No, that was me. That's on me. I, it, the, oh, I mean, I told him to do that. It's like, pff, all right. I mean, his, <laughs> hey, you know what's mad about this, Nico? You're never beating these allegations, even though I don't even totally believe them anymore. When I did that baller video, the one that was called Dedicated to Big Egos, and I wrote it like that Dr. Dre track from the 2001 Chronic album. And basically, my whole thing was, it doesn't matter if Nico is the one who calls the shots on cutting this guy, bringing this guy. In. It, first of all, a lot of the things he wanted seemed to magically manifest into reality. I don't know if he had a fucking vision board and he was like, ah, the secret, the secret to being Nico. And then it just came real. I don't know if that's the case, but I'll tell you what, my, my take was always this, like, he doesn't need to fucking do it because instead they treat him like the actual golden child. It's like everyone's just rushing. Like the second he steps foot out of like the fucking house, someone from G2 rushes and places like a fucking, like, like a fucking handkerchief under his foot so it doesn't touch the ground ever. And Lord God, Emperor Nico never touches the ground. It feels like that. It feels like they're all dying. Like, it's like Nico plays bad in a game and someone's like, I think you didn't do well, Nico. Get down, Mr. President. It was me. 
I, w- I gave him the wrong rules. It was me in that game. And they take the bullet. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, even if you don't actually call the shots, Nico, first of all, there's a very weird fucking atmosphere around you where everyone's taking the blame for everything except you. You're never, in fact, you're never included in the blame. They don't go, well, yeah, he fucked up and I fucked up. They just go, it was only me. It's like, that's weird in itself. And then I've always said this. You'd be a moron eventually. This is why I low key. Look, I don't agree Kassad should destroy his friendship and never speak to Nico. But I know what he means. I actually do. This is what would have, I could have done. This is a hot take. I do now blame Nico for what's happening at the majors and in G2. Because if he doesn't in- exert his influence, I actually think he is a fool. And I don't mean that like as an insult, like he's an idiot. No, I mean he's a fool in the sense that like he has that influence. He could do so much with it. By the way, think about the fact that when he went to Falcons, it almost happened. When he comes back, he made that whole thing about, I wasn't the one that wanted next, and it wasn't me. It was a... Bro, you should have called a shot. When you came back in, look, you, it's not like you were coming for a different contract. That whole thing about you got the bag, no. But you could have said, I'll stay, but I want something like, you don't have to make it even unreasonable, bro. You could have just said, how about this? I think, remember, it was last year when he came back from almost leaving, he could have just said, how about this? I'll give till the end of the next major cycle for the Huxley project. If that doesn't work out and we don't win the next major, I think it's a totally reasonable amount of time. You haven't even had to qualify by then. You'd have a whole ramp up period. If we don't win then, hey, fair play, dude. We had three possible majors together. We won some titles. That's cool. We're just going to go another direction. By the way, Alexi B was allowed to be booted after fucking six months, but apparently Huxley just has to have like 10 years because he won Blast World Finals and two IEMs. None of these games, none of them in CS2, by the way. None in CS2. And then in CS2, since they've got Nexa, this isn't a flame on Nexa. He actually played above the part, the fucking major. They're just not the same team, bro. Like, I think it's nonsense that they were even in the semis, man. I think that's on Mouse Sports. Like, I thought it was... Even the fact they got they almost got to the final was actually an RV fucking choking. Now, he was almost choking them to the final. So, I actually do think low-key... In a way, I get your vibe. I don't agree you should stop talking, obviously. That's too far. But I would be very disappointed in him. Like, I would have to say myself, in a way, I would blame him, even though to him it's like, but I didn't do anything. It's like, exactly, mate. When you're retired and you sit back and they go, Granddad... What, what, back when you had that head like a fucking thing off a banana bit bread tin, why didn't you just go to the top teams again like FaZe and win everything? Go, well, son, I never did it. Wasn't me. Wasn't my fault. Go, no, but weren't you one of the top 20 players every single year in the top five? Yeah. In that case, couldn't you have said something? And Yeah, probably could have, but you know the problem. I didn't want people to think that I had influence, so I had no influence. Just tanked back a race. Like, no, be, don't be whack. Like, that can't be the reason he doesn't win a major. Like, the problem Nico has is he's had a lot of shots and teams that could have won majors, so, like, he's not going to get that thing that, like, Guardian... You know why I'll never blame Guardian for never winning a major? He was in a fucking Russian-speaking team. He's from Slovakia. Like, are people aware of that? Like, he doesn't speak fluent Russian. He even told me, like, I think a little bit, and I tried more and more when I got in the team. Like, <laughs> as far as I know, it's because he's just a fucking opera. He just, he just shot everyone, and then they just talked Russian around him and just did what they could in the season system. Like, unfortunately, Nico won't get that. Like, it's why, unfortunately, morons are sort of low-key right to go, why does he keep look failing? It's not that he individually fails, but he certainly keeps himself in stupid scenarios. So, no, I sort of see what you mean. Tis a spicy as fuck hot tech. Like, I, can't I, 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 I see you asked one for the beginning, so yeah. I, I had to deliver. Oh, yeah, I'll, the I'll thing is, like, I, I, I begged him to be selfish, like to think right. about his own legacy right. there. Yes. Like I begged him to do it, and yeah. he wouldn't do it. Right now you said like, and it's, first of all, to get back to this veto shit, like there is no team, and I'll tell you this with 100% accuracy, that goes like, okay, coach, what are we playing? Oh, yeah, you play fucking, if we're not playing whatever, like Anubis. Okay, sir, we play Anubis. No, no, none of that is happening. There is always a discussion between the whole team or between the IGL and the coach. They need to be on the same page. Yes. I don't go to, I didn't go to like my IGLs and tell them, listen, we play Nuke tomorrow. And he said, yes, Kassad, we go. Now it's always like, hey, what do you think about maybe going for Nuke tomorrow because of this? And then he tells me like, maybe not. And then the other players yes. chime in and say like, listen, <laughs> these guys, that guys, and then we make a decision what we do, what is the best, right? And then if they, we cannot make a decision, then I make a decision, right? But this, like, oh, yeah, I did it. It's not hooks, you just leave him alone. Like, that's garbage. That's bullshit. That's not true. And I can tell you 100% it's not true. Mm. So, like, all these things, like, for me, just now, you said it yourself. They won these things in, in CSGO in the past year. And how much does how much credit does that buy him? Surely it runs out eventually, much? right? Yeah. Uh, he has to run out of it. Like, yeah. you know, Nico is, what, 27 right now? Yes. He needs to think about his possibility, like, and the future, what's going to happen? Is he going to be the only, like, gold contender without the major? Zyber won it, Device won it. 
obviously see by the way wanna... you can even argue it's more criminal right. because the joke is monacy might have been the best player at the major yeah like yeah. bro you've also got another superstar next to you he, he's never had a player like this he had guardian at the end of his prime when he's starting to go down this guy is entering his prime this is like unironically if you saw how z would play uh, if you saw how monacy played at that major you could except for the fact their firing style is different performance wise that could be z -Woo. That's like Nico plays with Zewu now, were, guys. So can we just get the IGL fixed and win all the fucking tournaments, you know? Exactly. They were in the second <laughs> stage, right? They were qualified for Legends, whatever the fuck they called it, uh, by being 3-1 on the RMR. So they skipped the opening stage. Yep. They managed to fuck up the best of ones there. They had, obviously, a difficult draw, but they did fuck up as, as a contender team. That is, you know, if you fail, if you lose, you fail, right? And they got saved by fucking NVIDIA. We all know. Everybody <laughs> knows. They know. Yep. VP knows, everybody knows that round would belong to fucking VP 99 out of 100 times, right? They go to the quarterfinals, they do what they do, they play well, they go to the semis, and what happens, right? Again, the same shit happens with the Vita. And now, like I said, like, how much credit does he need? Like, three more majors, three more major cycles until Nico is 34 and can't play anymore? Like, you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm not blind. Like, there are people in the team that didn't perform well. Like, next, I had a good map here and there. Last map was bad. Had a good map in the playoff. Hunter was on and off. He was good at the start of the playoff against Mouse. Then later on, he fell off. It's not the uh, Katowice 2023 Hunter or Cologne 2023 Hunter or Nico. There are people are comparing them to that, right? And comparing them to their standings in the <clears throat> in the in the last year. That's what sure. I made that tweet about, like, number three, number 13, and, and number two, right? Whatever the fuck it was. Yes. So, and... They didn't play like that. That's not on Hooksy. But these other things are. like. And who do you replace? Do you keep Hooksy and Nico with the same team and replace Hunter? Is that going to give you a better result than now? Absolutely fucking not. We all know what the fucking story needs to be there and what needs to be done. I will say, I do love all the people who go, why don't you blame Hunter, your mate? Like, first of all, you just said he'll not stop talking to Nico if he doesn't fucking change leaders, you moron. So obviously he's not that biased, is he? And then secondly, why would he blame Hunter, you fucking morons? You all told me you were fine with JKS being kicked for spurious reasons that were all rumours and that you're cool with Hunter staying because you all only watch the big games and only remember the big matches. So you all remember only Cologne and Katowice last year, even though I fucking told you on the last episode, Hunter had like a one point. 09 rating for 2023. I actually think it's absurd he was even like, like the joke is he should be at the absolute bottom of that fucking top 20. Like that's nonsense. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, those are two good. For sure. It wasn't even the major, he was fucking sick. So like people already were gassing Hunter a bit too much and they've now had to learn. Yes, obviously he's in really bad form now, but he was never going to be like fucking a third superstar player. That was never on the cards, was it? I'll tell you one thing. I could spin this into another take that I have. Oh, I, also, I have a take, I have a oh, take around on. this one too. Go on well, well, it's just that it's that if if Hooksy if Hooksy does no wrong and everybody from G two always wants to defend him, well, I just think that somebody has to be to blame for this all. And if there's anybody else that has produced no results and actively worked against the team, is Taz. It's Taz. Taz, okay. and that's and so my take right now is that hey, if we can't if we can't fire if we can't fire Hooksy, if some reason Hooksy, if I have to take these things at face value, and frankly, I'm not taking them at face yeah, value. Yeah, I think Hooksy is responsible for a lot yes. of those things. But if I am going to take all these statements at face value, I would just say fire Taz. I think Taz has done a horrendous job on this team. If I actually look at some of the results on them, in what in the, right when Taz joined, it was right after they lost to Navi at the World Finals. December 15, 2023. They announced Taz is joining the lineup seriously at that point. They then lost to Navi four consecutive times in four different matches. What the fuck is a coach doing if not fixing the mistakes and helping you beat a team that clearly has your number? Because he's clearly not helping with the veto to beat them. He's clearly not helping with the strategy to beat them. And on top of that, we kept making a meme of this when we were watching all these games that these Taz timeouts are just ruining, ruining G2. I went back and looked through the major at these timeouts that he decides to call when he decides to call them. What are the results after that? G2, when they were up against Navi 3-0 in their BO1, he was he, they were up 3-0, calls a timeout. They proceed to lose three in a row. They lose the map match against, against Navi there. He was up 7-0 against VP, decides to call his first timeout, loses four of the next five rounds against VP on Anubis, where they were shell-shocked. VP were shell-shocked, down 7-0 after that crash. Taz calls a timeout. They start losing that game. It never really got out of hand, but losing the four of the next five just to say, just to try to get your little spin on the game, it's like... You're 
actively hurting the team in live matches. You're actively hurting them in vetoes. You're not helping prepare against teams to be better at them and beat them in rematches. What are you doing? This thing, to me, just looks like a PR move to save Hooksy's ass. You bring in a Taz, who is a leader, and as a player, I respect him tremendously. What he did with VP was incredible. That go that lineup was one of the best ever, one of my favorite ever. But as a coach, he has been completely fraudulent. And I am sure that there are better coaches that are available out there right now. And if he's going to keep taking responsibility for losses and not and not blame Hooksy, <laughs> I got to place the blame somewhere, and it's on him. I do agree with a couple. You want to take it, Duncan, or should I? No, no, you obviously want to defend him. Go on. Uh, no, I don't want to defend him in that way. Like, the, the, I can blame him for taking the, this position. Like he, like, he hasn't learned from different people who took the same role that he is taking right now. At least we have Neil, who, who kind of failed as well at the beginning, but he was, like, at least in that phase lineup for a while, and he played there, and he kind of understands, like, how things are working as a to some degree in that in that aspect of the game. But Paz to take that role, I even said it before, like he might be the he might turn out to be the best coach ever in like four years from now. But right now he's just a nobody <clears throat> in that role. Like he is Taz, the legendary Hall of Fame player from 1.6 and CSGO partially, right? With a Polish lineup up until the 2017 and whatever the fuck it was. Like that's his legacy. As a coach he has the same legacy as you, Maui. Right? So no <laughs> legacy. Right? And jumping yeah, sure. into, into a role of head coach with uh, one of the biggest and the most demanding organizations on the planet that anything that's not resulting in a title considers as a, as a failure, taking that role as a, as a fucking newbie is something that you can do to yourself. That's the worst thing you can do to yourself. Plus, on top of the fact, you're entering the system that's already been developed. Whatever the system might be. Like uh, G2 is having some good things in their game, right? I watch their demos all the time. They have a lot of cool stuff and connected stuff. Like, it's not bad at all, technically. The thing is, like, um, you jump into that. You have Nico with a massive personality. You have Hooksy, who is facing all this pressure, all this shit that's going on to him. Hunter, who has also a voice <coughs> and a personality. You have a young prodigy, who is the best opener in the world, a superstar, youngster, like, you know. And then you have Nexa, who has just landed and he needs to find that spot in the team. He has trouble with confidence, coming from OG, shaking, like, you, he was playing shaky in the beginning. People were on him, like, there is all this story. JKS Nexa, who is better, who is worse. Obviously, it's going to affect him. And you, as a newbie coach, have to deal with all this shit on top of the fact that you go to the major cycle, have to win the fucking major, have to continue the legacy of winning events for G2 from the 2023, and then all this shit as a fucking coach who never coached in his life. He was set up to be fucking blamed by you or other or, or other people. And now him like speaking up and saying it was my veto. I don't know if this was a G2 PR or he was just trying to kind of protect the player, which there was absolutely no need for that for him to do. Like because obviously it's not true. At least not the way he says it. Like, you to be the coach, like, you don't go that way, right? You go in the smaller step. Moses did the same thing. Jason did the same fucking thing. Yep. Straight from the analyst desk, Caster's chair, he went into liquid. The same shit. Look what he got. He will never go back to that role again. Uh, Henry, though, he had, he had a different role. Yeah, uh, Yanko. Sure. Talk to Yanko. He was in phase for a long time and MIBR. He hated that life. He couldn't fucking find himself at the beginning because he couldn't believe what other players are doing and how they behave and how they fucking, you know, have their mentality. Listen, the players are very different when you speak to them, you know, post-event or post-match day on a, in a hotel bar and just chill. But they are very different mentality when you speak to them on the server and in the practice room and in the fucking theory sessions. That's two different people. And people who think it's the same, they usually end up being wrong and getting blamed. So him being in that position, that's his absolutely his fault. Failures of G2, I mean, how much can you actually put on him? Like, how the, how the fuck does he know? Like, never been a coach, never organized. He shouldn't be there. He should be hired as an assistant coach. Why was Swanny, in a sense, successful, right? He was the uh, successor of uh, whoever was the coach, Ekstaz or Malek or whoever the fuck was it. 
I can't even remember, in G2. He was assistant coach for a very long time. He knew the players. He knew the strats. He knew the systems. He knew the, the fucking personalities of the players. Maybe he wasn't like authority as a coach or some sort of big persona that you need. But at least he knew about the in-game stuff and when to call a timeout, how to approach different things and analyze the games. Thais doesn't have any of that experience. Why do you see it in football, in basketball? Not a single fucking coach is like, oh, straight after his career, he goes into a fucking coaching Lakers. Or in football, like coaching Real Madrid. Nothing. You go to fucking development league, you go to smaller teams, you go to young leagues, you go to fucking European league, Italy, Spain, get a team, see the fucking systems, how they work. You learn from someone and then you jump into the role. Right now, I mean, he just jumped in like a fucking astronaut and just landed in G2. What, I mean, what expectations could he get? I don't blame him for that at all. Uh, even if he did the veto, I don't blame him. But for this other stuff, yeah, I, I think you're right. The problem I have is this. This is where it's the same as with Huxley. Should Huxley... This is why Kassad's tweet was actually wrong, the original I was watching Huxley one. Because it ends... The last line's the one that failed. I made yours better, mate. I changed it to... Now, you saw it, G2. So replace it. Because here's the problem. Huxley should want to be in G2. Huxley is Huxley. He needs to do the best for Huxley. He needs to make his career... By the way, it even I would even say it's almost immoral to even tell him, take less fucking salary and go to a shitter team. Like, except, no, Huxley is in his career with his family in his life should do what's best for Hoxie. My problem, obviously, is he's not the GM of fucking G2, is he? So either, if you need court, you can either force your way out, you could already have gone, mate, or you could ask for him to be removed or replaced, or you can even make it reasonable like that, set a time frame, a goal, he doesn't meet it, you match it. Or if you're the GM of G2, you're the obvious one. And here's the reason why I actually put it all on the GM of G2 still. Because you had the audacity to publicly say Monacy is not for sale. Right, cool. Two superstars in prison. Thank you, dickhead. So now they both have to be in prison. And by the way, the real reason for that is because if people don't know, Carlos, I believe, even said this not that long ago on a fucking podcast last year. When they signed Monacy, obviously they hoped he'd be awesome. But then as they saw him blossom over the next year and a half, he even did a podcast where he said, I tried to get Zewu and Simple. I couldn't. And then I got Monacy. And Monacy's better than Simple. So who cares? Because I think this is when it was like ending CS Go when Simple was going down in level. And that's the problem. Here's what people don't seem to get. It now is like trying to buy Zewu from Vitality. He is not for sale... Square brackets, unless you just say like $5 million, $10 million. You'd have to say some absurd figure in the same way as Real Madrid can buy anyone or Barcelona. Or, but you have to spend so much it doesn't even make sense. Like So that's even in my opinion why they went in an interview publicly and said he's not for sale. That just meant for normal money. That was like, you know, Saudis, if you just go and ask the boss and he can get 10 million, well, I mean, fuck it at that point, you're a moron. Yeah, we'll sell you into that. But we're not, but the point is, he's going to be the future of our team for five years, 10 years, hopefully. Like, we ain't selling him for this year because you want to buy him. So I do think the GM is fucking up in that sense. Like, now, mate, before we were complaining because you had Nico and like rising Monacy, now you have peak Monacy. By the way, he might have a higher peak, yeah, but his peak at the moment, number one player in the world and you've got fucking Nico who's still pretty good he actually had an off major if people don't know but he's still pretty fucking good so like if you have these players why would you just keep running it back with fucking it's not even just Huxley on his own it's Huxley and then the combo that Hunter and X are out that mega or they, they're not going to frag out because I told you at the major man the reason I could never take this team to go to the final no matter who they were playing is because I know there's going to be a map where Huxley ne Nexa and H Hunter all three do badly and when that happens you yeah, sure, if I can take the best version ever of Nico Monacy, we can win that map. But, bro, that's a ridiculous standard to ask for to win a map. <laughs> like, what are we asking for here? Like, again, like, it's not like fucking Nico and Zewu played together and they didn't win majors. Like, they were in other teams. They were separate fucking hard carrying. So I do think that's mad. Then what I'd say is this. I, on the Huxley tip like that, you're absolutely right. All of those people did. In English, the term is the poison chalice, Kassad. Because the idea is it looks beautiful. You want to drink, oh, but it's poison. You know, if you drink it, it's going to kill me. But you can't, have, you can't, it's just the allure of doing it, being the one. So the problem they have is this, just like Moses, you're right. Moses, that is never the way you should become a coach. Th the fact that you analyze the game, you're not in their team, by the way, you're analyzing the game, watching it from outside, guessing at what's happening and using your knowledge. You don't even know the calls. You don't even know who triggered some of the things that happened. And then you had, a, you had some some brilliant beers with them at the bar. That ain't it, mate. If you think that's coaching, I'm actually glad some of these people failed. I hope now you have a tremendous amount of respect for what coaching is because it isn't just that. It isn't, well, I know the game. That doesn't matter. Well, I know the players. No, you don't. Here's why you don't know either of those. You don't know how to coach the game. 
You don't know when to give someone space and say nothing. You don't know when to go, I'm actually going to have to ask you, a brilliant player, to change something in your game. You don't know them as people either. You go, you talk about throwing head that beer. Yeah, exactly. Coaches don't just have beers and go, hey, pal, don't worry about that one. Fuck them, get them next. No, no. Coaches have to have like a distance from the players too. And they have to sometimes be their boss. And you know what? They have to be the bad guy sometimes. You know, all those beers where they're loving you. Sometimes they're probably bitching about their coaching teammates to you. It's you they're going to be bitching about, mate. You can't be there going... Yeah, it's all me, guys. Like, no, you have to go be like, I've got a plan. Trust me, it didn't work now. We're going to figure it out. You know what? I don't like your attitude. Fix it, please. We used to be friends before, but now we're professionals. Please treat me as a... It's a totally different vibe. So I think people like Taz, I don't blame them for taking the gig. Same with Henry. It sounds like, well, if I'm not going to do my main thing before, I may as well get the best possible job elsewhere. But I agree with Kassad. You'd actually, in a way, it would be kinder if it was like football and they just didn't give you the job. And you had to go to some secondary league or smaller team. Then when you prove yourself, by the way, you don't even have to win. You just have to look good with that team. Then after they know you've sort of gotten out of your system, the rookie mistakes, the teething problems, then you'll get the gig. Then you like, if people don't know, the best example ever is probably the Xavi Alonso guy. He is going to get either like Bayern Munich, Liverpool, he could have any fucking team he wants as the joke because everyone's seen, he's so cracked out, even just in the climb of his career. Like now is when he's going to get the biggest gig. If he'd have gone straight to the big gig, what if he'd failed the first season? Then it'd be like, right, forget it. He's just a player who's never that good. So I agree on that tip. And then on the task thing, him, so, go on. Oh, sorry, take Arteta. Arteta was under fucking Pep Guardiola yeah, for yeah. fucking years. Ages. And now he's on the head of, of Arsenal. And yes. Arsenal is doing good after 20 years or 15 or whatever. Like, they're not winning because the competition in the league is crazy it's hard. But they're still yes. on the top. Like, Arsenal that hasn't been on the top for like 10 years. Yeah, the yeah. same goes like Xavi Alonso. He started in Bayer Leverkusen and all these shit. Like, he could have gone to a stronger club and failed. Like, that's yep. the, the better example that I, that's why I interrupted you is Zipnix. He went to be assistant coach in Mouse. Okay, he didn't fair. go and, and yeah. try to be a coach in Australis. You know, okay, I'm not going to be on the bench anymore. I'm not going to ask to be in Heroic. I'm not going to ask to be in any other Danish team. I'll see the Cycron. The, I think he's Danish too. Maybe I learn from you what it means to be a coach. Like, see how that, how the a game operates if you are a coach rather than a player. Because it's two different fucking things and people don't understand. You said it nicely. The, the, the relationship with the players, it's not the one that you have at the bar. And it's not the same like you have it on the server. Sometimes you need to tell the player, like, listen, you can't be doing this shit. Even though he wants to do it and he's going to hate you for it. You have to tell him no because it's for the greater good, for the good of the team, right? And he needs to be okay with it uh, at the end of the day. Otherwise, you know, maybe find another team if you cannot be okay with these things and if you are actively trying to, like, kind of be bigger than the team, then we don't need you in the team, right? And you need to be the bad guy sometimes with the players. And I don't know, like, if he starts that guy, can he do that with two months, you know, experience as coaching. I don't think you can. You, you can be 10 times Taz if you go aggressively against Nico without any experience. You're just going to grow resentment towards him. Right? He's just going to be, like, awkward. So uh, Moses made a mistake. We already went through it. But, like, it needs to be some sort of, a, like, entrance to the thing. Yes. Right? And, and then going into the big gig. By the way, if people don't get it either, first of all, Maui did say if that was the condition, by the way, he didn't just start with Taz as a shit coach and all his fault. He, remember that. Secondly, it is a fucking hot take show. It is literally a hot take show for fuck's sake. And then also, I'll just say this. The other point that's going to be totally missed here is because every idiot's going to go, I don't even need to say anything, Taz. Really. He already knows that. So if you're going to get mad, he's going to get mad anyway, mate. I don't give a fuck about disclaimers. The reason why I'm going to say this now is he isn't a coach because he's only just started. If he can if he can tell me he's actually a world class coach now, then what the fuck is coaching Taz? Like you just figured it out overnight. You just, you just came in Never done it before, but now you're just a genius. You did it all. And I don't care that you're an IGL. Again, I've said before, a player is a player. A coach is a coach. That's a different role with a different fucking status. It's why, actually, even the amazing IGLs, the God beats, they don't instantly become the best coach. They even have to level up as coaching. I even heard some stories from big players, by the way. At the beginning, he was trying to do like an IGL and go mad at people for missing a flash. And then he had to realise, wait, shit, that's the IGL. No, that's what I'm doing. That's Tapson's job. Fuck, uh, I'll give you the odd piece, of, you know, this piece here. And you have to give that guy space. He's young. Even he had to level up because it's a different skill set every job is a different skill set it's one of the reasons why I always think people actually undersell me when they tell me I did. you just do this now. I do five jobs all at once and I'm world class at every one of them and by the way the reason I can dare say that is I had to work really fucking hard to be world class at all of those jobs it took me 20 years to get good at some of these jobs I wasn't this good at any of them out of the gate I was shit as an analyst I was an, an alright writer I was okay on video like 
history stuff. I had to obviously that took a fucking decades. I had to do history, didn't I? I can't just do it over a year. Like, believe it or not, you can't look it up on Wikipedia. And there was no Wikipedia back then, you fucking idiots. So all I'll say is this for Taz. The problem he has is this. He isn't a coach yet. And then also on the timeouts thing, I even joked about this on the broadcast, but I actually believe it. I also believe those are very silly timeouts to take because your team is rolling, you are winning. And my dream, if you're the other coach, is this motherfucker just takes his timeout and I get to talk to my team about what's going wrong. You've actually given the other team a chance to go, that was four, that was 3-0 or 7-0. Fuck, we're getting our ship pushed in. And you know what? Because we were just on a buy round now, our coach wasn't going to call the timeout. He was going to see at the end of the round if he needed to when we had no rounds, you know, when it's like nine to fucking one or something. You, that? you know where I fucking learned that from? Come on. From fucking Kerrigan in Star Leather. We were playing a quarterfinals in 2018. It was in Kiev. Yeah, and we were we were being, so I think, it was the one that simple lost to mouse spots. The quarterfinals. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. We played against Space. Yep. That was like the first event that when I came back to Renegades, and yes. we were like, I think it was Inferno, and we were coming back and stuff, and I think actually they were coming back, and they beat a 16-14 after a match. You were up like nine two or something mental, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, and I, I, I go to Kerrigan after and Nico because they were in the team together. I asked him, why didn't you go for a timeout in 14-14? And he was like. Yeah, because I didn't want to give you guys the 30 seconds or whatever the minute was back then to kind of consolidate your defense or offense, whatever it was. So I didn't want to give you the extra time. I just wanted to keep rolling because I lost all of my timeouts like in the first half trying to fix things, right? So it's just like I, I realized like, oh, fuck, yeah, maybe this is like I should do this, right? So I, and on, on regards of the timeouts and tasks, I don't even know if he asked for them or what it hooks you. Right? Knows, sure. But the thing is like, yeah, those things are very... <clears throat> You need to like go through them to learn them as a coach, right? You need to. How many times in the past have I wasted my time for garbage, and then I find myself in the late of the game where I don't have it? Like it's just those are the things that you learn, right? And yes. the things that you need to say in the timeouts on those thirty seconds. You yes. cannot be saying, "Hey, lay guys, listen, we are looking good and we are calm, sir." You can't waste your seconds on that. You say, "Listen." We are struggling in the fucking openers. I want you to use more grenades early on on the ramp. I want you to use smoke and a molly before, you know, X smoke expires in connector, whatever the fuck, right? Rotate with an all back into the fucking ticket. And then next round, we play Astralis setup. Th that's you use the timeout. And that let's go. And that's it. And somebody chimes in. Yeah, yeah, this guy's doing that and that. I'm going to drop you the fucking whatever smoke here and there. So that's what you use 30 seconds. You don't go like, oh, yes, and guys, our communication is bad and we need to step it up. And like, <laughs> that's fucking waste of time. Yeah, but I, I, I can tell you that nine out of ten coaches are making that mistake. I uh, remember talking to Daps about a time that he played Navi, and I think Navi were in a really close game with them. I think it was at IEM Rio, and and something like Liquid were doing re well. They were on a streak of rounds, but then they lost one, and Daps really wanted to call the timeout. But he said he told me he was like, "Well, why would I actually call that timeout? Because Blade's just going to be better than me in the timeout anyway. <laughs> so if I let point. my if I if yeah. I talk, then Blade's going to talk, and he's just yes. going to say something better than what I said, probably." And by the way, there's the other issue. You're also the least experienced of the IGLs every time you call the timeout. You're also giving the better uh, IGL coach. You're giving the better coach a free timeout there. And in this case, as Cassandra, it's when he really needs it. This is when he can actually do effective work. And he doesn't burn his timeout. So yeah, I do think that was a misplay, but it's also an example of where maybe as an IGL, you would rally people when you keep going, guys, but that, that's not the call for the coach. Anyway, the other thing I was going to say was this quickly, which is, the other thing people are missing is the obvious thing they're going to counter Kassad with goes like this. Ha, huh? but what about Neo? He was also an IGL the same team. Right, as Kassad pointed out, Neo played as the IGL of Rain and Brokey. Think about that for a second. He already knows them. He already has a personal connection. By the way, you could even argue they're two of the players you actually need to sort of motivate this team and keep on side. And if they can be good, then Faze will win. Also, he doesn't need some of the other shit because he doesn't have Oxy. He has Carrigan. The whole reason Robban never got a lick of credit is because everyone thinks Carrigan can... And, he, and by the way, he can look at his career. He can do it without him. So you're not there to be like the god. Like you can contribute in that sense, but you aren't there to be like the genius who's going to come down from heaven. So you don't. You also that's a way safer team to come into and sort of let you let yourself charge up as a coach. Yeah, the easiest thing with the Rob and slight. Well, let's not forget I, Rob's Bowie. Like there is oh, Rob's yeah. in that team who is the secondary voice who is going to give you the opinion and he's going to read the game properly, right? 
Like it's not just Kerrigan. So it's, it's a different situation. Sorry, go, go, go. Well, just 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 to like remark upon the Robin not getting enough credit thing because I remember some people like Yanko were like, I think it's obvious you vote for Robin as coach of the year, but it's like, well, when I can see that Kerrigan can win Cologne and Cato with Robin, but then also win the major without Robin, it's a lot harder for me to vote for him for coach sure. of the year when I know I isolate the variables <laughs> and it actually didn't even change the outcome at all. And then I've got one last thing to say because it's a perfect chance to wreck all the Kazad haters. It goes like this. I've already pointed out in the past. How do you know about that? He literally is Nico's friend for ages, you fucking moron. Like, I don't, how's that not clicked yet? Has it really not clicked yet that they know each other? That, he, that Yanko knows him as well. That's, they're not just like weird fanboys like you on the internet thinking you know people. They know, they, he could DM him right now and ask him a question. Not even in English, by the way. You can even do it in native fucking language and find out exactly what he thinks about it. And spoiler, I've said it in the past one. Do you think he's not ever telling him? Do you think him and Hunter are not? There's now three of them motherfuckers in that team from that region. At this point in time, Kassad has like Richard Lewis level access to the inside of this organization. Like he might know more than Huxley about what they think inside that team. <laughs> Thinking through your fucking... And then here's another one. You know when they'll go like, yeah, well, what do you know about timeouts? Um, Kassad actually coached Nico. He might know what Nico might think about things like whether he'd have an opinion about a veto or what he did. He literally coached him. Again, you don't know this, guys, because even though you could look it up on a Wikipedia, you popped out for dick around that time and you're about 11 years old. And so you haven't looked it up on Wikipedia because that sounds like homework to you. And you're all going, <laughs> watching the counters and going, my driller, and then hoping a case gets opened on screen. Like, you're barely even watching the match, are you? You're, Donna, are you there? Don what about what about the veto, Donna? Should he have picked Ancient? Like, how the fuck would she know? Well, she would. The joke is like Kassad because she knows Nexa. She actually, in fact, there yeah, you know, there's my hot take. Donna should do the fucking vetoes for G2. She'll ask the players. She'll actually do what's sensible. Nexa's a smart guy. He isn't an idiot at all and that will be the way that we'll get these vetoes so Taz <laughs> do that interview with Orna and Donna and we'll fix it up okay right and then one last thing to say is um, no I, I have it to spin into a, an even spicy take but I said this before it's already a hot take I'll warn you boys it is a hot take but it starts as a hot take and then you'll see it's, it's one of those trick ones so even though they say Manatee was it for sale you know that rumour before was like Nico and Monacy to Falcon Imagine that, that should have been the move. If Nick, I made this point on Twitter right after their elimination. Imagine this lineup for a second, guys. Nico and Monacy, Snappy, Magus, Madden, Coach, Zonic. Why isn't that, by the way, the number one team in the world? It could be. It absolutely could. By the way, it's better than G2. It shits all over G2. And before you go, uh, yeah, money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, they don't need trees there. They have like, Oil. I don't know if you're aware of that. Like well, they have, they have, they are the only ones that have unlimited money. Like they're the only ones that could. I wouldn't normally do this because I'd normally do the. I do the business thing. Well, that'd be unreasonable. You can't do the. No, the joke is they could if you said yes. That lineup, by the way, for Nico Monacy is better than G two. Like if you make that lineup, you could do everything with that lineup. I can't be certain, but it's an amazing fucking chance. I think. So I think they should have. I think they both should have gone to Falcons. You can't handle like can you? No, 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 no. The thing is, like, uh, I wanted to do the similar hot take. Just oh, right. Honesty. Okay. I was going to say Nico should go to Falcons. This is still good with some Pius, too. I th that might be better. The problem is some Pius isn't better than Monacy, but that team might be better than G2, right? Listen, let's compare, like, what are the goods and the bads. The bad side leaving G2 is going to give you, not going to give you access to some of the events, probably. But then, Falcons did buy the Blast partnership. Yep. They're just going to lose some of the ESL events. So. Yes. That's not that much. On the, the, the worst thing is that you lose Bonesi. Yes. The best opera in the world, probably the best player in the world, just a guy who is just an absolute monster. The kid is just unbelievable. Uh, the good side is you get more money, like bigger bag, way, way bigger bag. And you probably become one of the, if not the best paid you know, player Absolutely, on the planet. Yeah. You get to play with Zonic. You go with Lars as well with uh, you know the combination. Yep. So is he's he would like any kind of psychological issues that Nico would have would be gone, and I can tell you that hundred percent. We can't, but like okay, we mean like you know that much inside his head. I know, but you mean like if he has problems, like yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. It's the ideal people to work on it for sure. Yes. Zonic Lars, right, and then he would have Magisk. In a anchor shit. role, one of the best, yeah. you know, anchor roles. He would have some pious, obviously, the the opera who is not bad. Like no, yes, you compare it, you compare it to Monesi, it's not the same. Like just whatever, it's not. But like he's still up there, 
and then you have Stappy, experienced, good IGL who can actually, you know, work properly and have some sort of numbers at least. And I think he's definitely more experienced than Hooksy is. And by the and way, here's overall. the difference. I guarantee you, because Snappy, it's why he instantly went out of his way when they got simple for the one blast showdown to do an interview saying he's insane, basically. Because Snappy fucking loves really good star players. If you actually did give him simple Nico or Zewu in their actual prime, like good for, he would build the whole game and they would look the best they've ever. It's like what Carrigan did. They would make them look fucking insane. Like Nico yeah. could be like number one player in the world if he did that for yes. reals. It's like it's because plausible. Because Hooksy, not Hooksy, but uh, Snappy, he's not taking up any space. Yes. Similar to Hooksy, he's just better player overall. And I think he's smarter overall, right? And then more experienced. And then he would have a better coach. And all these things, compare them one against another. Is couple of events more plus Monesi better than what you have on the other side? For me, it's not. So that was no, thinking maybe, debatable, you know, right? maybe, yeah, maybe he would be better off, even if he missed the major completely. Like, who the fuck cares? If you're going to win the next three, who's going to remember that? Especially you because if you're Nico at this point, semis doesn't do anything for you, mate. You nothing. Have, you have nothing. to win. Yeah, you have to win. I'm Literally afraid. nothing. Literally yeah, nothing. I agree. So going there would be a definitely, I mean, right now, I mean, we spoke about it. He chose the other option, which is like, you know, he, it could have worked, but it didn't. But now maybe it's time to rethink some situations, right? And maybe, spoiler, uh, next year, in fact, this year, I, I believe it's implied his contract runs out this year. Mate, the second that contract runs out, you can just fucking walk over there and get the one million signer bonus. You, you can it. get whatever you want, yeah. right? Like, and obviously, Falcons have the money. They have the money. They have the yes. staff. They have the yes. plan. So why the fuck not? So that's the okay. That's the, that's my opinion on that one. Just like, yeah. what do you get and what do you lose? Yeah, good one. All right, Ma Maui, hot take. Uh. Well, I'm just thinking about this Nico thing to Falcons. Oh, I mean, sure. I feel like uh, it would, yeah, yeah. I was still still. Oh, I didn't know you haven't given your take. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would just think that with with how G two has been and everything, I feel there there are actually a few pros to this. I feel like if he could go with Monacy, it's a no brainer right now. But if he has to join the the team as it is right now, like I just think of it like this: instead of Dupree, because they obviously just got Dupree instead of him. And uh, I feel like that would be a slam dunk. I feel like that's a really good. I team mean, all you have to do with your brain there. is you're just taking the team from Cattle, and instead of Boros, you put Nico there. Like, yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. could have been or, in the finals or, already. Or the RMR, or <laughs> yeah. the R, like the RMR. It's better, obviously, if you have. I mean, if you had, if you had Nico in the RMR, for one, that team qualifies, and two, uh, for Cato, you probably winning one more round at Katowice, so you might have made it. I don't know if you would have beat Spirit in the grand finals. But or but I I or phase, it was phase, it was phase yeah. yeah yeah it was it would have been phase I don't know if you necessarily because spirit were insane for him actually so I don't I actually can't say for certain there if you don't have a chance though spirit. it would have had a better they would have had yeah. a better chance it would have yeah. easily been a better I'm not gonna go like Kasada and be like 100 percent they're gonna sure. beat spirit or anything like that sure. but I I sure. do think that it would have been a good a, it would have been a better fight overall sure yeah I, I guess like I guess this is a take where it's like. I'm not like super strongly opinion on it on on it right now, but like with how G2 has been run and the state of it, and you get to have Hooksy instead of Snappy, you get to have Zonic instead of um, instead of Taz. I feel like that alone would get me over there. And then you talk about oh, you'd actually probably get paid a little bit more. Okay, I feel like that sweetens the deal. You could get paid a lot more. I can tell you right now. If people don't know, yeah. Eco isn't on the God one. As far as I know, I think Richard even implied because they've just obviously re-signed Zewu. Zewu is probably the highest paid player in the world right now, guys. So if you're Nico, mate, you could be. <laughs> Oh, there's another thing, by the way. This is the thing people miss in their careers. For Zewu, it actually doesn't matter if he's the highest paid. If you're Nico, mate, we don't know how many more years you're going to be a top five player. Like, at some point in your career, you should be the highest paid player. Like, you, you, you earned it. Like, that's your status. It's like that thing. Now we all know this example. When they did that, like, deal with, I think it was, like, fucking 2012 or something for Kobe, where he did a max contract deal. It's famously why Mark Cuban said you could amnesty him when he started the season a little bit bad, right? Everyone was going, he took too much money. It's like, bro, he had less in earlier on in his career. So if you're the best player, your logic is, I deserve to get paid now. I, I earned this status. And then let's win while I'm the best paid. So no, that's, that's no minor factor. Yeah, you could, you could be set for life. It's also crazy that Zaibu is the best player in the world right now when that he's 23 years old. Sure. Like he has about seven more years to play at least. Yep. Nico is 27, right? Exactly, yes. And Simple is 26. Simple yep. is younger than Nico. Like, you know, you have to think about these things. And yes. It's just... Uh...
Okay, Maui, what is your hot take? Come on. Because I've got one, but I'm saving it because it's so hilarious that you'll have to see. I'll probably go to the whole thing. So come on, what, do you have a hot take? Uh, I have I have some because I made a list of basically of I ordered everybody in terms of current form as an IGL oh, and on. I think I'm trying to I looked at my own list and thought okay what's the hottest of the, of all of these takes and I think it has to be the fact that right now I rank and this is by the way very present form I'm not using tons of historical data for this I'm thinking about okay how is 2024 how have the last couple of yep. months looked for overall yep. Num my number it's three be sure IGL like number two in the world so we get ready. No, 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 no. It? It's, it's better. It's better. No, my number three IGL right now is Boomich. That's my number three IGL. You're fucking insane. I'm going to do the Cassad right now. You're, you're <laughs> actually fucking insane. Here's the thing. Because I don't mean that he's not, it's not that he's not good. He's not, Boomich is the number three IGL in the world. And by the way, I'm just going to put this in there. You don't speak Russian. No, yeah, of course, obviously. Okay, it's a hot obviously, take. Hit, hit me with so, the hot take. Hit me so, with the hot take. So, 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 so here, here's how I broke it down because I came up with a rubric for this. So, okay. like, there's, I, I have a whole YouTube video that's like coming out. Right, that's okay. like basically, I ranked okay. all of them and how I came up with it. Surely it makes sense then. But, okay, but, on. but, 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 but it's basically it's based off of calling. It's like veto and game planning. Okay. Also, I do value in-game ability because if you're just like a huge bot in the server, okay. I don't care how good your calling is. You're just going to be a okay. hindrance to the team and how good you are as a captain in terms of leadership. So, in terms of in terms of like IGLs that he doesn't beat the two IGLs that he doesn't beat Kerrigan and Alexi those are like clear 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 for me but other people that are honest here I have Shuhei I have Ale I have Apex and I have Jame I think those are Bro. guys that are on on his it's just sad just to imagine being Apex watching this show. You probably just like slap your fucking drink of orange just across the table like, bro, I'm fucking winning me. I was even in the semis with Z Wolf put like shit. And then Maui comes along, he's put fucking Boomich. I even beat Boomich. Like, go on, they keep, Same keep tier. Going, going, Same tier, but I got Boomich ahead. Same tier because I also I also have to always remind people of this. I, I don't it. know why I, I have it. to, but because it's all we can talk about with Cloud9. He got to the quarterfinals of the major as the primary opera practically okay. like like that's where it's ridiculous sure. to me and he's not he's not even he's not doing it on every single map they don't have an opera you get to the quarterfinals of the major and you have the worst opera in the in the top eight you have the worst opera in the top eight and it's you it's you and it's hobbit sometimes you know and i guess perfecto takes it up on one map but the fact that he's able to go that far put a good fight against so many of the top teams in the world i find that to be incredibly impressive and i just feel like when it comes it, the thing is Look at that Cloud9 roster. Look at like the fact that players are inconsistent across many different maps. Sure, Axel had a pretty good tournament for himself, but he's been so missing for that team for so long. And I think that when it comes to this team, Cloud9, and you think like this is a bit of an appeal to authority, I suppose, but some people would have thought if they had a good offer, say a Monacy, say even a Shiro, something like that, that team could have won the major. And I think you have to think in hypotheticals a little bit when you think of Boomich, his potential, and Cloud9's potential, because if they had if they had an offer, I think they could have beat Vitality. I think they could have beaten FaZe. I think they could win the whole major. And that's why if he you just give him one more good piece on that team, that team's winning majors. And it's because of the fact that when he came as, as the IGL for the team, it was a direct, massive improvement over what Electronic was doing as a caller, over what was Naphany was doing as a caller. And so it, it's just that you give Boomish the right pieces, he's he can be a major winning in-game leader too, and he's proven it before. By the way, I actually think he should have just made the take. Boomish would have won the major if he had, like, um, not even Shiro. Who's the other ones he could have? Uh, uh, not Monacy. Who? Shiro, Monacy. I mean, you think of... Uh, you could probably even have gotten, like, a wonderful type player. All right, there you go. If he had wonderful, he'd have won the major with this lineup. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. a hot take. And by the way, it's not a terrible one. I think it's, I think it's interesting. Spicy. What the, what the fuck are you even smoking, dude? <laughs> Like, where are you at right now? Just I want to How, do these how does he always come with like a different opener though? That's what's mad. <laughs> know, he's know, like, Maui, are you out of the common fucking hedgerow? Like, he's always he's always got a new winter. Go then, hit us with it. <laughs> what the with fuck are you? Like, it's just him. Like, the guy I was while you were on your rant, like, I was checking in and he joined, he joined Navi in November. We, after uh, a fucking longest, longest. Yeah, sorry, Cloud9. After a long break, five months later, you give him a top three spot. You must be fucking smoking something. Like, where? What the fuck? Like, the thing is, like, out of all these people, you would just go and say Boomich is number three? 
Shall I give you an inside it angle also, here, Kassad? I'll, I'll just help you quickly, right? It, why it's not as crazy, or rather why I don't find it as unbelievable Maui would say this, is you have to do a meta-analysis of how Maui's doing the analysis game. Remember, he was doing the whole thing of he was against Nafani. So Boomic replaces Nafani, and the team looks better, and now it doesn't even have Shiro, but it's still got... So this is like his... That's his angle. He's, done, he's flipped from anti-Nafani to super pro Boomic, and no one else gave Boomic any credit, including in Na'Vi. So he's trying to like basically pick up that out of the fucking thrift store like no, get the dust off that's a fucking good jacket still this looks good still Danke. I can go in the premiere in this like he's trying to reclaim it you know he's trying to reclaim Boomich the two angles that he got called like he was like talking about his electronic didn't do a good job and then obviously Nafani was a disaster so he's better than Nafani he, that means that he's number three right now look at the results of the major they beat Ecstatic twice So and Legacy after that 39 G2 and the Navi 2-1 in that 2-0 game and then based on that and the, the disastrous loss in the quarterfinals you put him as a number three over like all these people Right now, including, for example, Shui and uh, and Jame and Apex and like all these, people, even Kixan, for fuck's sake, who is a young and up and coming, you will put him above him. You must be fucking smoking something really fucking good that you would think something like that, because <laughs> okay, there is what... absolutely no chance. And you say that he give him the right pieces. Yeah, give me the fucking. Ten million dollars and I will be fucking, you know, enjoying my life. It's just so obvious, right? Anybody can do it. Like you switch Monesty to to C9, yeah, they can win a major. But you switch Monesty and give another and get Nafani back, they can still be the fucking major. Okay. <laughs> that might be a hot take right there. That's the hot take right there. If you just give them the Nafani, I don't want to see they win the major anyway. They just can't. Uh, Basically, if you have Monesty, you can't lose. Listen, they, I'm not they, denying they he did a good job. I'm not denying it. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, Maui, 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 the Maui wait. Funny, these pieces of listen, make the major. No, Maui, that, listen. Or the, with you, Shiro, I mean. You, f you fall in the same track. Let me meta-analyze Kassad. You have to understand, by saying Nafani would win with Monacy, he's double slammed on Hooksy. Remember, they are, the problem with this show is people always have a political agenda that's behind everything they're doing. It's okay. Oh, my God. Okay. No, you, you could not put Nafani on this team with any lineup and they were no, not, they were not winning. No, I was just trying to prove a point. Basically. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Sure, sure, that, sure. That Boomich is like, so, yes, improved Cloud9 Cloud tremendously. But like, I don't think like, you know, he would be the sole reason why they win the major if the, if the piece, the, the perfect piece, I mean, it would be the perfect piece that's going to be, the, you know, uh, responsible for that success, not Boomich. Boomich is just a part of the team that, you know, got better with him. But he's definitely not top three IGL right now are you fucking serious <laughs> okay i would say the way that this discussion becomes a little bit easier for me to side with boomage is just that i look at i it's so obvious one, one obvious thing we have to do when we think about igls is the eye test and that's calling and we look at nafani with groove we look at electronic with groove we look at boomage with groove and how much drastically better this team has looked on their t sides when it's just simply boomage instead of any of those other two in-game leaders for one, I probably have to short the stock on Groove because I just don't feel like I could rate him that highly because with two other co with two other IGLs, it hasn't been that pretty. But with Boomage, it's such a drastic improvement. And the fact that he was able to e even able to accomplish a top eight when a lot of people, I mean, you kind of, I think a lot of people probably just had Cloud9 barely making it through. But I actually, when you look at a lot of those those uh, pick em things for a lot of different people, like like a lot of the personalities in the space and things like that, in the in that elimination stage, a lot of people didn't even have Cloud9 to make it to that to the top okay. eight at all. So like it was one of the teams that was frequently left out. A lot of people put in teams like Navi, Eternal Fire over them. Right. So many other teams got more picks than Cloud9 did. But that's why I'm so impressed with Boomich. That's why I'm so impressed with uh, <coughs> the fact that without an opera, you're thriving because you're doing a lot of kind of interesting interesting plays with your CT sides, which are finally coming to, come together because Boomich is on the team. And you're also just calling good enough T sides that are getting you through a lot of these games too. The calling on the T side has been overall just one of the strong suits of Cloud9 in general. My not argument more. is not with Boomich's skill or his in-game uh, leadership level. I just don't want to put him number three right now. It simply makes no sense. Like makes no absolutely no sense to put him three. If you said like top 10, then yeah. But top three, absolutely not. There is no chance. Sir? Not okay. now, not at all. Because Maui, it's five months since he's back. Like five fucking months. They didn't win anything. They didn't like. They just improved. And you with already no opera, with three. no opera, with they no opera. They're doing all this. Improved Maui. Whose fault is that? They they have no opera. Fuck them if they want to buy an opera. 
Like, who cares? <laughs> I'm, so I'm, like, saying, I'm not like punishing I'm Boomich. I'm not punishing okay. Boomich because I, I think he's been a great caller without, uh, without an offer. Okay. They improved. Yes, they improved. Is he a top three? No. Win something, I'll put you in the top three. Okay. Right, here's my problem with this take is it is too hot. As in, like, not only is it too recent. Like, I, what area I grew because that is this. They were always a gels hair from fucking winning those series in those playoffs where they used to lose in the quarters and the semis. But that's also where, like, one good call wins you the game, if you know what I mean. Like, that's where th those guys do shine. I agree. They wouldn't win tournaments because they don't have an opera. I do think that has severely handicapped them. And for me, they were always, they were always like, going close against the best teams anyway. So, but the problem I have is I can't give who is top three status. Like, I'll get, tell you one reason right now. Like, I actually think the most underrated narrative of the fucking major is, you know what? I'm the one of everyone on the show who gives Apex the least credit as an IGL. Bro, he didn't have fucking Zewu in this tournament. And he almost made the final. He was almost in the final without real Zewu. He had a worse version of Zewu and almost made the... If you didn't see the stats, guys, it was way worse than you think. We're not talking about, like, you know, that normal thing of, like, ha-ha, and then when he has a bad tournament, he has, like, a 1.25. No, 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 go and have a look, boys. You'll get depressed. This was, like, if, if it wasn't for the fact the narrative was that he was ill... People like me would be like the ultimate hater, haters parade of all time, wouldn't we? We'd just be fucking donking on this guy because he never had that. But he he managed, by the way, himself with some of his own calls. In my opinion. I think he called a fantastic tournament. I think he did really, really well. He had them in position. I even told him this is a DM the second they lost. I said, man, I actually think you played and called a well enough tournament to be in this final. But what happened is a couple of your stars, I didn't just say Zemu, some of your stars, did, uh, my analogy was, some of your stars didn't put the ball in the back of the net. You can't win the game. Doesn't matter how good you are as a manager in football, you can have all the best tactics, you can have a genius pressing system and counter attack. At the end of the day, if the striker, star striker, misses the ball and kicks it wide over, the, you lose the game. And unfortunately, you have to take that. Everyone going, you fucking suck. But like, you don't control, you're not the player. So the problem I have with that one is like, I, I, I can't put him straight over people like Apex. So he's still doing well. And then the other one is, the job he came into, I'll do the Neo example. He didn't come into a fresh team, right? He played with Electronic and Perfecto already. They were in his teams. Then you got to consider that he himself is not only an IGL and even an Opa, he's even the space creator on T side. That already means his system gets easier because of the role he plays. And he actually does a pretty good job of that. One of the reasons I'll, I go the other way, I don't think he's an elite IGL. I think he's actually more of a well rounded IGL than I understood. And I think actually, crucially, I think he picked the right team. That's also the, another massive thing. You remember what they used to be like on this team before him? I think even just the space creation is a big deal. And the fact that they're all comfortable with him. I think that's massive. So I can't make him top three. That's too hard for me. That is too much of a hot take. But okay. I do think like he's underrated. I'm not I'm not backtracking on it, but I'm telling you what my A plus tier was because I made it in tiers. So okay. Kerrigan and Alexia are the only people in the S tier. The A plus tier is Boomich, Jame, Apex, and Shuhei. Okay. That's it. That's okay. it. Okay. So so he's yeah, in that he's in that range. Third, so I don't care. Right, do you have a little take then? You said third, <laughs> third now you're back. I know, off, no, like, no, I'm not backtracking. I'm telling you, I have him third, and he's in an A plus yeah, tier with it. three other people. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. yours then, Kassad? Come on. Okay, I'll do this one. <laughs> I'll do this one. This was the only chance for Spirit to win a match. <laughs> despite Ooh. the fact that they have oh. the Honkin. That was a 17 year old uh, player that was like a 1.35 rate. Like... Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Not for Donk. I didn't say I feel Donk. Like, I feel like this show is... I actually now understand a, a mad concept. I'll explain to you very quickly, Kassad. Which is I now understand why in the medieval era in Western Europe, the church had to enforce such control over people's thoughts and what they could even, <laughs> like, discuss. Because I now realise we might actually be ruining our sanity by doing this show. Like, the, 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 we're like Doctor Strange on psychedelics in, like, the ninth dimension trying to come with hot takes that are so, like... <laughs> and I think it might actually be making some of us mentally ill. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm only half joking because like, well, come on and hit me with this fucking take. No chance they win a major anymore. Like this was their one. Just forever. Do you even though there could be like 19 CS2 majors? You know, yeah, you want me to give you a like a timeline? <laughs> I, I, let's let, let's say five years. I'll five <laughs> just years. just the five years then. Just like fucking tw ten majors or something. Like right, you had your chance. You've lost the first one, and also if you don't win a major, I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> God, what's the reasoning? What's the reasoning? What's the actual reason? The thing is, like, it? I think people will figure them out right now. They're giving me the vibes of Gambit 
and they switch to Cloud9 and the people start figuring okay. them out and trying to understand the way they play. Now, definitely, you know, they have Donk. He's not like, he reminds me of like, not not in a style way, but just in, in a numbers way, right? Of Exile back in CSGO. He was dominating. Okay. He was playing. They had Inters who was supporting. Now they have Zontix who is an upgrade over Inters. When you compare to one, one and one, obviously he had a bad game in those quarterfinals and that, but I think he was sick. That's the story, at least what I from what I heard, and he had like a high fever or something. But I don't know if it's true or not. But the thing is, like, um, definitely he's one of the best, if not the best, support player right now on the on the on the whole scene. Zontix is, and obviously Donk is. You know, we know the numbers, we know what he did in the past five months. But how long can this last? I don't think that this was their best chance. Now they were in a peak of form after winning Katowice, after dominating all the fucking group stage, and they get into the perfect scenario, perfect fucking scenario. They play the decider on Vertigo against Face, who perma buns it. Even Neil says after that they practice close to 20 times. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then, like, you know, which is not true. I just watched the game. They, they just don't know a single grenade. No, they, like just they, they, they just run in. They just run in. They just run in. They just run in. They don't know anything, right? And they managed to lose that. And that is where I got the vibe. Yeah, it's Gambit slash Cloud9 all over again, right? They don't adapt to the things. Like, even though Chopper is a super smart guy, they have a good system right now. But this was the moment. I don't see it happening again. I think people are just going to adapt to them. They're still going to be a strong team. I'm not saying they're not going to be a strong team. They still might win a couple of tournaments, like the big ones, multiple even. But the major, I don't think so. Mm. Uh, like sh- donk donk is never donk Maui, does it not does it not best. justify your version of like are you insane wouldn't that, shouldn't that like that should be your moment to say are you insane to Kassad and what is he smoking right like that's just written yeah. off the whole squad you know okay 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 no, i never okay. said donk i said spirit Oh, okay, spirit. Don't, sure. might go, spirit okay. don't might go to another team and win fucking 10 majors okay but, right like, fair you enough. know okay. i just it's come spirit. on then. what do you think Maui? This, this, okay, for this take overall, I, uh, Chopper, Chopper just, he just messed up so badly. He just, he just messed up so badly for the team. The veto, the veto was ridiculous. Oh, if Holly wants to take credit for the veto too, then fuck me. But like, you know, if that veto was such a bad idea for, between them, but I think that. They can win the next major. I, I I think that they could definitely win the next major. I think that they're going to learn from these kinds of mistakes. This was a simple error in the veto in the second phase, where instead of playing Ancient, which is genuinely a map that you pick first in a, so many different series, you decided to try to punish pick and go for your worst map in your six map pool. That to me is a singular lesson that is going to reverberate through Spirit, and it's going to be a very simple moment of reflection for Chopper and for Holly and for the rest of the team to say, we're never going to put ourselves in that kind of position again because we're not going to fuck up the veto like that, and they're going to come back for that next major. Are they going to have a chance to win it? Absolutely. What The next major, the Shanghai major, I think Spirit are going to have an excellent opportunity. Assuming that this five-man lineup stays together, Chopper, Spirit, Donk, all of them are going to come back, and I'd say that they're going to be a top three favorite. So I think that this is... Uh, a ridiculous idea. You're always gonna bet the the how. You're always gonna bet the field over a single team at majors. But to say that they have no chance again is is preposterous. They they are absolutely have a chance. They got the best player in the world. They have a top three rifler in Shiro. They have an IGL that has consistently made it to major playoffs. They're gonna put themselves in a winning position again. They just won't fuck up the veto as badly again. You said first of all, you said like they have the best player in the world. Monesi is not playing for spirit. Second of all, right, listen, I'll do the quick meta analysis translation. You have to remember in the same way as he, you have to do more than than just one or two tournaments. Like he's just not going to give number one status in the world to Donk after two big lands. So that's just not Kazan's way. He's going to give it to Monsey because he has the legacy, right? True. The legacy is just like overall better. That's that's like, a whole take it. in itself. Bro. Okay. That's that's it. Right now, Monsey okay. is, is overall better than Donk. Yeah, Donk is like close second. I'm not disputing oh, Donk, but Monesi okay. for me is is number one right now. Right. That's my opinion only, and you okay. can agree or disagree. But the thing is, like you said, you said obviously that that he's the best one. I don't think he's the best. And second of all, you mentioned Shiro. You said he is a rifle. I think you meant the op. But the the, the thing is, like he is. Uh, 
not even 50% of what he was in his prime in Gambit and Gambit Youngsters and Cloud9, or like at least at the beginning of Cloud9. Not even at 50%. There is no clutch potential anymore. There is no multi-kills potential anymore. He's not the same sheer as it was. Maybe it's the system, maybe it's him. He is not really a threat in that team as other opers and the other teams are. He's not a threat. Donk is the threat. You neutralize one threat, what does Spirit have? Nothing. Dontix as a support, and that's it. Shiro is not really performing the, the way that you can put them like as a contenders for the next major, right? Another time that 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 uh, Don can have a great tournament and 157 rating, yeah, it can happen, but not on a major. The the what what else I'm going to say? Yeah, the, about the veto, like that's a fucking mistake and a half for not taking Vertigo Insta. They had an option to pick it instantly. They went for Mirage and lost it. If I am them, and I was in that spot, I take the map they're vetoing in the last five, six years since it came out. Last time I think they played was in Rio against, you know, whatever, like it was <clears throat> Bad News Eagles, and they lost and they went out 0-3. I remember I, I uh, expelled Face from the Major on Vertigo, and that's when they stopped playing it. Back as Renegades in 2019. And they stopped playing it since then. They played it once for they gambled, they lost. Now they left it open in the quarters and in the semis. You saw what happened in the semis against Vitality. Oh, yeah. Well, not in the semis. Yeah, in the semis yeah, against Vitality. Was. Like, it was a disastrous shit show. Vitality just ran over them. If, if Spirit picked that map, Vertigo, and just straight into going into that map, it would be 13 fucking 6 to them. And they would be in those, squad, in those semifinals. They would be in the second map, too. But they yeah, got scared, yeah. they got scared, they picked Mirage, they lost Mirage, they barely won Nuke, they went on Vertigo, managed to come back, and they choked it in the in the overtime. So, mistake on the veto, should have been Vertigo instantly picked in that fucking quarterfinals, instantly. They had the opportunity to do it, to close them out 2-0, they got scared, they paid for it. For me, it's giving me those vibes, but I tell you individually as well, like, you know... Okay, Chopper is a smart guy. They have, they play good Counter Strike. Shiro is not what you, who you think he is. Like he's not the CS Go guy. The same as Exile. They are not the same people. How can we on one side say, "Ah, listen, Nico is not what he was," and completely be blind to these other players? It's the same uh, fucking thing. Shiro was really bad in the quarters, but he was. Uh, I mean, the thing is, on stage, he's he obviously faltered, but like during the group stage part, he was he was sick. Shiro was really good. I mean, he has over half of the rounds that Shiro played. He got he got a multi frag or one or more kills. So he's he's fragging. He's still fragging out. I, I don't know what happened on stage. Shiro did look like a shell of himself. But I'm not gonna color. I'm not gonna say the entire performance for the event was like that. Like when he played against all these other teams, he was uh like everything in the to get to three zero. Shiro was practically like if it weren't for Donk on his team, he's putting up MVP level numbers too. He's still freaking good. One game that he was really fucking good was against Navi, and that's a 2-0 game. And that was like the game that I can like say, okay, this was the Shiro that maybe can do it. But all the other games, including the match against FaZe, like, what are we talking about? Like, they beat Imperial 13-2. Like, you know, they beat Cloud9 13-7. Yeah, I'm going to completely go against Kassad on this one. In fact, the saddest thing is, I'll leave the last part till the end. It's going to even be, the joke is, I could just do a hot take off this, but then it's the shittest hot take of all time once I make my points, so I'll just make the points first. So first of all, my problem is this. The team spirit I saw looked nowhere close to losing until the third map of the series. Like, they were, even when they lost Mirage, like, you knew they'd fucking win Nuke. They were dominant, by the way. It's only in the end of the game that FaZe did some hero plays to drag it to OT, and they couldn't win because they had to just do infinite hero plays, and eventually, Spirit's just a better team, they won. Now, I agree with Kassad, though. The stupidest thing they did, this is so stupid, and a lot of fans aren't going to understand because they're going to go, I don't understand. It's the same maps, though. No, you idiot. The map that you play first in a series as your map pick is very different from the deciding map on stage to eliminate you from the tournament. By the way, the thing about Spirit is they're never in elimination games, so they never have to feel that pressure. You can front run if you're sick. Carrigan did it with FaZe at the beginning. That's why they tore up those two events because they beat everyone 2-0 and smashed them all 13-8, 13-6, so he never, ever had 
had to feel pressure and feel like, oh, what am I doing calling the phone? He never was in that spot until he got to the Boston Major and against SK and all the rest of it back in the day. So what I would say is this. First of all, you just instantly punish pick the vertigo. You go on to it. You go, guys, they almost certainly haven't practiced. This is the first map we're all playing. We're not even warmed up. No one's won a clutch in this series yet. It's map one. I agree. You just shit on them. It's 13-8. It's 13-6. I don't care if someone wins a 1vx. I don't care if you get lucky. You probably do just smash them and it's 2-0 at that point in time. And even if it isn't, the third map's comfort. The third map's a map you enjoy and that would play out differently also. So I think actually, I agree. The veto's a fuck up. But here's what I'm going to say about that. They learned their lesson, Kassad. That was, I hope they did. That, they've never been in that spot before. They've never been in that situation to make that mistake. I even said this to Maui. I think the most criminal thing about actually letting it through, I would have just vetoed it and gone to like ancient or something. The reason why is because bro, on the other five maps, you beat them. Yeah, they beat you on Mirage because they played an awesome game. But if I, if you say to me, I'm, t I'm getting three out of the five maps that aren't the Perma and Vertigo, does Spirit win? Yes, Spirit beats FaZe Clan. I would be very confident that. I think even FaZe Clan would fucking agree with me. That's the biggest joke of all. Like they said, I don't think they expected this to be the decider. I think what happened is this, and this happened to a lot of coaches, listen up, Taz, is G2, uh, FaZe Clan and Carrigan made a genius bluff, and then you were like, ha, huh, okay, I counter your bluff. Shit. I I make it the decider even more genius. Even more, except here's the problem: you are Carrigan idiot. Carrigan does this also because if anyone could get away with pulling strats out of his ass on a fucking map he doesn't play, it's Carrigan. Remember, because he's failed so many times, when he's the underdog like this, he just thinks, "Fuck it, I'm just going for it, mate. I'm not going to choke." I've already had that time in my career. The joke is, I actually, think why he was bad in the final is because he was such an overwhelming favourite in his brain. You have to believe you were going to win. You couldn't ever believe you were going to lose. We didn't believe there were going to lose guys until it was like 0-9 or something or fucking 0-7 or something mentally we all thought they're just going to break it and come back everyone did so that that's an that in its own way has a difficult that's why everyone cries about I want to be the underdog you look stupid because if you're fears and spirit you shouldn't ever be the underdog but in this scenario I don't think they'll do that veto again I think they've actually learned the hardest lesson which is we probably just taught by the way here's the other thing once I see Navi win the major Jesus Christ, Halley. If that was you, you just threw the fucking major in the bin, mate. Like, next time, let's get it sorted. So you fix that already. Then I'll go with this. Donk was insane anyway. I actually, you know what? He's had like maybe one bad map at the RMR. He had like one that didn't have the stats, but if you watch it, it's not terrible. Remember, you don't always get every fucking entry duel you want. Donk just doesn't play bad. Like he's actually, this is why, by the way, I point out when Zero drops off, he doesn't play bad, but he doesn't play as well. Donk has like a flaw that is mental for a rifle. I've never seen it ever in my life. Like his eye, because he does that thing that the Orpers do. Riflers don't do this. What Donk does is, Zero's done this loads of times, simple loads of times. They start a game like, oh, he's starting off slow, isn't he? What the fuck? He's like two and nine and then you start going like in back in mr15 like he's having a bad game you do a tweet like ooh, is it an off game and then you know what happens they win like one one v one and then they do like three three k's in a row and then suddenly on the scoreboard what the, what the fuck he's second to top and then at the end every dickhead fight, ah, <laughs> you said he was bad it's like what yeah because there's no, normal players can't do that like it's like that thing back in the day where in the nba you can actually sit the starters if you're up by 20 with like eight minutes to go because it's impossible to come back in a game people don't shoot three pointers back then like you could you'd won the game already so donk is so insane that like that wasn't even peak donk in the semis like he can still improve he can play better and here's the thing let me build all these points let me do it let me do it all right, all right. unless you have a good point go on, then come back in if you've got a good point but go the on. thing is like how how long did how many years took navi to win the major and they had fucking simple what are we talking about here they didn't have a line here's the thing oh, there's a hot take for you this lineup's better than all those navi lineups until they got the 2021 one yeah, you don't like that one, do you? Mate, no, Edward, Edward was a bomb at that point. In time. Based Fla on what would you say that? Like Flamey was garbage. Edward is an actual piece of trash, losing rounds up constantly. And then Zeus was a great leader, but he had a massive ego, and he would purposely pick Inferno because it's his favorite map when they had like a 58% win rate on it and ignore Train when they had like a 75% win rate for two years. So there's why that team wasn't actually that good. It had, it had reasons why they didn't win. It wasn't but, just and Also, listen, Duncan, they didn't play against the Australis 2000. 2018, they didn't play against strong teams. The competition wasn't that strong. You know who was strong? Fucking simple. He was stronger than anyone. Yeah, I agree. They should have won that. Like, how many years it took them? Like, why is it True. really different for Spirit? Oh, no, it, how many, like, but, but that's you what know. you have given five years, though. You didn't say, when, don't win the next Your health take should be the, be the next one. You're saying five years, mate. So let me cook. So I. So the problem here is, I actually normally, guys, should even say, to be fair, Donk could fall off. I actually don't think that right now. He has defied all my expectations to the fact I can't say he'll fall off. So if he keeps playing well, here's how I'll spin it the other way on Kassad. 
brought, they were one round away from going like to the fucking finals, essentially. Maybe they were like two rounds or something. I can't remember. They were in OT anyway. When they were in OT, they were a couple of rounds away. And that's with Zontic shit in the bed, Shiro shit in the bed. And they do a stupid veto, go on to an uncomfortable bet. Like, bro, if they just do all these things right, veto normally, one of the two doesn't shit the bed. She, by the way, I agree. She isn't as good as in Gambit. But here's the thing. He doesn't need to be. He's actually got more of a comfy role generally. And he does that thing where he just does the trade frag. That's actually working like a motherfucker because Donk's so good. Like when you say neutralize Donk, good luck with that. No one's figured it out yet. Everyone thinks they have. I, everyone who thinks, by the way, this is where I also wish the bracket was different. You know that narrative from the RMR, like, ah, mouse cooked them. Yeah, the fucking worthless RMR, like, what was it, like a 2-0? Who gives a shit, mate? Who gives a shit? That, that is literally, the. it's like right, why he said earlier he doesn't care about the Cloud9 Navi one. It's the least important game of the tournament, mate. The one who wins, brilliant, but the one who loses, you're still alive anyway. It's, like, it's not elimination in the same way. It isn't, and by the way, these are teams that think they're in the playoffs anyway. They're not like, if Eternal Fire's there, yeah, the fucking getting the playoffs is everything. This is our world championship. No, these other teams, it's just a game. Cloud9 also would probably have come through the next matches if they'd lost that one. So then the last thing to say is this. I actually think also that the Zontix angle is the one most likely to improve. Like, I have seen the odd major where she can chalk and chalk in a big game. Zontix, for real, he's never played that bad in his fucking life, mate. That was another super young rookie player at his first major, and he just got in... And by the way, he's also playing, I think, the nightmare team in a major in the playoffs. The most experienced, like, mega clutch guys who never give up because they all know they can win a bonkers 1v2. Even Carrigan is popping your head and fucking Donk's head, by the way, when he runs around the corner. Boomer Carrigan with an MP9 and a fucking Mac 10 and shit at AK just shooting in your belt while you miss all the bullets around him. Like... These, I actually think, here's what I would spin it into. This is what I was going to say about hot take. But the problem is, how can this be a hot take? Surely every fan's going to go, Thorin, that doesn't count as a hot take. So I'll, I'll take the side of the fans. Here's my hot take. Team Spirit wins the Shanghai Major. How would you like that? They would be my number one team to win the Shanghai Major. If I look at the average level of play, I look at, like, like I say, it actually took a lot for them to lose and they barely lost. And they're never going to do that Vito again. I'm telling you, they've learned their lesson, mate. They, I think that I think they'd be fools to keep doing that routine. I think they themselves realised because remember, Halley himself, not he's never been at this level. He's never been in a semi of a major. I, I bet he's right. I bet in a fucking online tournament, you could do this. It wouldn't matter. He didn't know what it was like to be in the major, mate. Like his players, remember in that scenario, he doesn't know they're going to whiff. He doesn't know they're going to get scared. He doesn't know they're going to feel uncomfortable because of the map. Essentially, Halley actually did. The joke is, he did the fucking Swanee, didn't he? Except it was Huxley, but he did the Swanee veto, didn't he? But he did it in the fucking semi-finals of the World Championships. I'll say they win the next major. Fuck it. Straight to Huxley, because you said they would learn their lesson. Did Huxley learn his lesson after Fnatic? Two majors like later, and then there is the same thing. Does that happen to Spirit? <laughs> you know? You would think so, they would learn, but so. they, they don't, right? No, no, I'm, I'm obviously speculating, sure. sure I'm speculating. Yeah, but I, I I mean, I would say they're not winning the major. Uh, okay. you know, but you cannot say, like, unlimited time, because, like, what, you're going to wait? No, no, I think, I think it's fair. You've made it five. Okay. Yeah, I made it no, five. Like, and also, time, but, I, listen, you know, Nothing against you guys. I don't think we'd be doing this show in uh, 15 years, Mick Cassad, or after 19 CS2. I don't want to don't hurt anyone's feelings, but just saying, that'll be quite a while from now. You know, it'd be a pretty long running show, if so. You never know, man. They'll give up a lot. And show. also, what sort of insane <laughs> fucking, what sort of insane pull would that be if we were like, like it's the year is like 2029. 20, it's like, well, Cassad, it's like what you said back in 2024, that Spirit <laughs> would never win the major. And they've just won their major. Dog, who's now like, I don't know, 26 or something. He's finally got his major. It took him all those years, but he did indeed get it. So do you admit you are wrong? No. And also, back, at, back then in time... They win, you know, the very last opportunity. They will probably win that major. And then the joke know, is, then Cassad goes... the fuse on... And now I have my take. I believe Huxy will not win the next CS2 19th major. Like, whatever. The joke is still in G2. He's still in G2 all those years later. Yeah, I okay. wouldn't be surprised. But I've got one that's a bagger for you. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a mini rant, then you guys respond. And by the way, you can absolutely roast the fuck out of me. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can tell me I'm arrogant. You can tell me I'm at this actually the most delusional Delulu take of Thorin of all time. Are you ready? Right. It starts with a, a sentence and then I go tch, 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 and I hit you with all the points. Right. So listen, in light of Alexi B winning the major, I 
Thorin Esports, I have the greatest eye for talent in the history of Counter-Strike. Here's where we're going. So in 2015, I already said, I actually said he was the best. I said Device could be the best player in the world. I thought he was as good when Olaf Meister was at his peak as he was. You're never making the major files at the time. Then in 2016, after just seeing, I think it was even after you just beat Na'Vi at ESL One Club, not even for like in the semis, I said Simple could be the greatest player to ever play Counter-Strike. No one else has these takes. They don't exist for any expert, any coach, any star player. These takes do not exist on the internet. Then the same year, you might remember this, Kassad, I got mocked ruthlessly for this. When Cold Zero was blowing everyone's mind, every major, they lose one map and he goes 1.29 or 1.28 rating, wins every clutch, dominates, masterful, like fucking Zidane. You can't get the ball off him. I said, what? Nico is the best player in the world. He's just in a shit mouse sports team and he's too young. I said, Nico is better than him back then. In 2016, and I'll tell you what, every year after that, it's gone way more to my side, isn't it? He's, essentially, Nico's better than Cold Zero, I said. I had that back in 2016. Everyone else, HLTV, Bozo guy from Serbia. No, no, look at the stats when he is in a major, though. Like, yes, with Dennis and Spiddy, and he's the IGL, you fucking Bozo. And they didn't even have Kassad yet at this point in time. Like, if you can't see those are conditions that will change how you perform, listen, just stick to the stats, you fucking nerd. I'll show you in a fucking locker if you talk shit to me in the Minecraft, the virtual uh, school that's in that game. Then, after that, <laughs> in early 2017... Team Liquid's already lost, simple. I came out right at the time they failed that fucking RMR, that qualifier to go to the major with that like failed super team with Stanislaw. I said, Elise is the best NA player and I fucking killed it. Everyone told me, no, he isn't. He's just baiting because he's on a fucking bad team. It's actually Stewie or it's Tarek or it's any other fucking person. It's Twists. Look at Twists' name though. I said, nah, it's Elise, bro. Early 2017 then. Then, you know that boy Alexi B, that one I just referenced earlier. Early 2020, I think it was February 2020, I heard the comms inside of the blast. And I can't remember if it was there or later at Flashpoint. I said, this guy is like, he's totally legit as an IGL. He's actually like, it sounds like a world-class caller to me. That's why I have rode with him the whole fucking way. That's when, you know, when Alexi B goes, everyone disbelieved. I didn't, mate. I was there. In fact, the joke is, I think I believed in Lexi B more than Lexi B. I think it actually freaked him out a little bit. I don't know if you know this. Like, when I sometimes believe in these players when they haven't made it, they sadly think I'm, like, in love with them as a person or something. I don't fucking know these guys. I don't mention device like that. But it's just weird to them. What's this fixation? It's like, because I can see something, mate. And then, are you ready? This is the last one. This is, this is Teddy Russo. I'll just say it again. Everyone told me for years, give up on MSL. And then he did win that legendary DreamHack Stockholm, where with, go look at his roster for North for that. It will fucking melt your mind. He beat Astralis, Prime Astralis, twice to win that LAN. And he was the ideal opera. Like, mate, I, I'm not saying I get it right every time. I've definitely had a lot of fucking misses. But I'll tell you what, who's better? Mm. By the way, probably Blade, but, you know, but hey, who, who's counting? And maybe he's on a kilo, but hey, on this show, they're not here to speak to themselves. You, you guys tell me, am I delusional? Am I delusional? It's a pretty hot take. I did just say I have the greatest avatar of talent in the history of Ghost Strike. Um, like, I can give you some of them, but I cannot give you the other ones. Like, for example, everybody knew back in 17 that Simple was, like, unmatched. Oh, 17? I said 2016, mate. But what, what took you so long? Like, yeah, what took you so long, him? homie? What took you so long? Me? What, what do you mean? I wasn't in the same, like, fucking world as you were. What do you, you mean? Do, I, I was a you coach. Don't ha, you, don't have was anything, a you don't have anything. You don't have a tweet. You don't have a thing. I, it, after, during ESL Cologne, I said he could be the greatest player of all time. I played against him in ESL Cologne 2016, I think. Like, with mouse sports. Like, yeah, he did. was already, yeah. yeah. He was already played in the group. You, you probably should have said it in an interview with him, mate. Would have been a good headline. Now, you'd be fucking wrecking me right now. You didn't say shit, of course. You just talked about No, because it's not my and, job yeah. to say that because you were back then working the events. Okay. Like, how can you compare yourself to me or anybody else? No, I know. I'm, about, I'm, I'm okay, and you hadn't got to my level yet. I get it. Okay, so keep going. No, no. I, I was just point. doing the real things that you were just sitting behind the camera. I was in the trenches doing yeah. the real things, yeah. fighting. Even so you, I, even you did. Are you ready? I'll, I'll, I'll spit it back on you. You were in mouse spot. Why didn't you say Nico was better than Cold Zero in an interview? I wasn't back to back that with Mouse Sports. Like, that was later. Did, did you just... Uh, you got it mixed up. ESL Cologne, you were coaching Mouse Sports. Nico was in Mouse yes. Sports. 
Me, yeah, th that was us, VP in the group, like the Polish guys. No, you're missing the point. You coached Mouse Sports. No, so, no, no. I, don't, so, I remember. So, like, so one of my takes like... is I said at the time Nico was better than Cold Zero. Yeah. You coached Nico, and even you didn't say he was better than Cold Zero. How do you know if I didn't say it? Because, mate, you did a million interviews about your team, surely. What, you forgot Why to mention would you're I the best that? player like, in the world. I was answering the questions. Like, there'd be people ask me in the, the event. What right. do you mean? I'll just say this. Maui, you can be an independent judge. Do you think in an interview, you've been on a few talk shows, do you think in an interview, Kassad goes, I will already answer exactly what you've asked me there, and I will not call you insane or do a tangent and say what I want to say in the answer. I don't know. I'll leave that to the, I'll leave that to the independent judge. The, the, the fans can say. All right, hit me with the other ones. Which other ones did I get wrong? Well, uh, Let him finish up. He's gonna decide at the end. Uh, not uh, at least the other one that you did wrong. Everybody knew that the best North American like player was Elish by far back then. Like he was. I could show you the Reddit league. threads, but okay. Like who good. was like who was better than him? That was even in, in everyone game. was hyping Twist because of his aim at the time. Oh, right? Tarek they, they was in Cloud not, Nine. Was like, a monster. Twist was playing. Stewie, with this, with Stewie Two K. Yeah. By the way, was no, everyone was raving about him? They were. Later, they were. He came in later. No, it was a year before. But okay. No, he, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But the thing is, like, Stewie came after Elish. Elish was already a top, top dog name in the fucking NA scene. And he, everybody knew that he was going to be there. For Corzera and Nico, I'll give you that one. That one you did say. That's a you did call. Yeah, I remember the shit storm that you got for yep. that one. But you were 100% okay. right with that one. So I can give you that one. Okay. Device... I don't know where to go with this one. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm leaning more towards that you were right than you were not. A lot of people because... at the time, you remember, Kassad, people would have maybe done the Shiro thing to device back then. They were like, yeah, he's pretty good, yeah. but like in a group stage, yeah. who cares, you know? I was like, missing. Yeah, yeah, I was. remember there saying, if he angle, just gets the, that the... one thing fixed, he's going to be the best, mate. And he won a lot the, of fucking majors, mate. The group stage angle was there, definitely, yes. when you called him out. Like, that's why I'm even leaning towards okay. you Fair being point. right. Okay. With MSL, you are just uh, smoking shit somewhere like in the back. All right, what about with Alexi then? Because what... here's the thing. I don't Alexi... believe the Alexi like this, mate. You didn't have this what? love I had in my fucking beating heart for that man. In our fucking shows, I fucking praised Alexi. What okay. do you mean? Okay. But did you but have him as being as good as I thought? Probably not. Okay. Not, not, not I don't I don't think okay. so, but I did like praise his capabilities and the, okay. especially right. the fact you, that you he was be, able listen, to pick the wrong teams. You can, but... you, you can have the second best eye. I don't care. Like, you can take your fucking your praises and keep it to yourself. I don't want to play that game because it's not my thing. But the thing is, uh, who else was there? Fuck it, I forgot. Uh, yeah, you said MSL. That was a complete... That's it. Concept. I had, like, I Device, Simple, Nico, Elise, Alexi B. The yeah, MSL would have put in his half joke at the end. Like, who gives a shit? Alexi B, you did support. <laughs> I am going to say that, that you did support. From OG onwards, if people don't I support an OG in NIP, all these teams. Yes, yes. But are you the best? I don't know. Like, who do you, who do we compare you with? That's why I say it. Just tell me a name. Just tell me a yeah. name that's better than me. I don't know. Like, that's that's in your world? Journalist? No, no, a analyst? anything, anything. Tell me a player, a coach you, that's better just... than me. But you, but you just named them yourself that made better. It's probably Blade, Blade like this. Yeah, it's hundred percent Blade. If people don't know, I, the reason I'll get the reason aside from the joke, it makes the hot take funny if I say I'm the best of all time. Obviously, the reason why I'd give it up to Blade for real is he actually does have like twenty years of doing shit like this, guys. Like he found all the people in the Ukrainian scene too. You know, like so. I, I, I'll, I'll give you this one. In your world, like the broadcast world, the journalist slash you know writer, whatever, like all those like aspects of of the the profession yes. are, you are probably the number one when it comes to picking talents and not just the talents in game the talents for broadcast too yeah the, if that. people That's don't the know bonus. the reason why the greatest though, of all no you know what the reason why people don't get why it's actually a secret bit of a trick there is you know people who are morons think i don't do anything on the broadcast i have chosen from my whole career you can ask uncle this to specialize elsewhere I am not trying to look at what they are tactically doing in the team. I'm not trying to look, did they have the best latest smoke lineup? One of the things I have always focused on is player performance because that's where my history helps me. I've seen all the great players in history. I have a sense of the trajectories. I know what it looks like when a great player is coming along. I know what it looks like when someone has a hard cap to their aim. I know what happens when their positioning is. It's why I told everyone from day one of Boros. It's like, man, his mechanics are sick. He has no fucking brain, of course, so ignore this 0.8 kills per round. Like, that's, that's a fan on HLTV. Fucking hell, put him in fifth. No, don't, you idiot. Like, he'd never survive. So I'd just say, I have put a lot of time in those two areas, if you notice my specialties. Player performance and veto. I never pretend to be the best of my else i don't need to be because guess what you guys are so why would i fucking need to be um yes and also like you have the strength that's 
can advantage to other people because you have all these years of oh, fucking of experience. Yeah, right? I've, I've you cannot expect advantage. Maui, yeah, Maui to be there because he's like fucking three years in, yes. the, in the whole thing, right? Yes. It just it's longer sense. than that, but yeah, you mean his analyst. Yeah, um, sure. you, know, you know what I mean, right? Sure. As, a, as a point. Maybe I know he obviously weird. obviously he didn't exist to any of us before he did the events because yeah, he was just, just yeah. he was just plebeian scum at the time. But now now he's come in, we've allowed him to have a shower in the outhouse. He came in through the servants' entrance, and now he's actually sitting at the big table with us, eating filet in your <laughs> come on, out. What's your <laughs> what's your t- Do I indeed have the greatest knife talent of all time? Your choice. Yeah. In terms of, I, I think one thing that you definitely hold the crown for is being willing to stake your claim on these things because so many other people in the space are just like that's why it's great we have this show, obviously, because we get to just stake claims it's like perfect, this. Perfect, yeah. Other shows, but but like other people in the space are kind of like. People are in this space are generally more results oriented than they are actually predictive, yes. which is why, which is why even on like, you know, a lot of death segments, people don't even say who they think is going to win because people would rather just not be wrong. But it's like, I think one thing that to credit you, you didn't ever really care if you were wrong. Not that you were wrong about simple or about some of the players you mentioned, but like you, you have been tooting the horn of like config for a very long course, time. And it's yeah. like, this guy's no, never me. really loved he's, up he's to that potential. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's in fact, it, it's like, it's, it, it's only like the biggest slide, like that where you publicly were like, so because you like wrote those open letters to a couple different people, yeah, I yeah. think like a liege, maybe it was, was it a liege simple and config or something? Yeah. I, I don't know who else you wrote them. I did for, some illegal but, edges as well, but yeah, sure. Yeah, and like like Elise has worked out, Simple's worked out, but the confident one, he just spat on that letter and just like then got kicked in the shin by a bodyguard. You know, true, it's like true. it's like that dude, that dude didn't give a true. shit about that stuff. It feels like so. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it just like takes somebody else to be as predictive as you to even like try to hold a candle to, be, to you because other people that are making these kinds of predictions, like if you want to bring a blade into this discussion, it's like he's doing it where he's putting his money where his mouth is because he's letting the team's oh, results sure. do the talking yes. and obviously he had some very good picks he won two majors with people that were practically handpicked by him this major picking the people that he thought were the cream of the crop from the previous paris major and obviously picking people like perfecto and bit for the other and and hand hand grooming and developing boomich and the, the card nine players some of those ones too people forget that when he did the gambit yep. pre before with axel and then some of the young youngsters and then also like some yeah oh, it's crazy. It's the, i can't believe yeah. that's why in real life i'd give it up to him i'm just joking for sure. yeah yeah but in terms of people that are more like the thing is that blade isn't really really like making an announcement like hey i picked all these guys whatever it's like we kind of have to find out in these little uh yes. spurts here and there it's like oh that was blades actually that was blades pick that was blades yes. pick. but you're just you're you're loudest about it and your track record is obviously very very good with it obviously also have to just uh you know pat my own back or pat yours i guess at this point or scratch yours it's just that you you picked me to be a broadcast talent too that's why okay oh i see what he did at the end there oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he can't, also, he can't good, good, picks, good picks good picks good picks good picks how the fuck did we turn this show into like <laughs> Us two <laughs> praising Duncan. Kassad, yeah. <laughs> all I'll say to you is this, mate. I did say you were a really good coach before you made the semis of that major. Did you? I did it for years, mate. We talking about? Oh, I, there's a cheat I, reason, I, which is when I met you at some event before that, like we had a big convo about the game and I just realized that you could remember all the rounds. You had a very good sense of, unlike a lot of coaches, you weren't in your feelings like certain other coaches. You understood people had limitations and I was trying to do this. Like you say about the veto, you understood like veto concepts. By the way, one of the reasons I get so mad why me and Yanko had that falling out is I'm so sick of people doing veto concepts that are like, but the last time they played that against someone, who cares about that, mate? That's not how veto works. It's about the fundamentals and what you're strong on and what you're always trying to do this is the number one concept is I don't care the opponent you're trying to get two out of three maps you're really good on that is the number one concept in Vito what what falling out did you have with Yanko? Basically, I said on Twitter, because I'd just done massive deep dive into all the teams. Like, I'd looked at the last 17 LAN series that Vitality played, and I wrote down all the vetoes, and I compiled, who did they do a veto of this against? Who? What did they pick? And I basically said, like, I thought they shouldn't do the Anubis pick, because you should gamble you could get it as the third, because as a world, maybe Vitality lets you have it, especially if Zeewoo's ill. And you should go with the overpass pick, it's more likely you can win anyway, and Anubis is amazing for the fucking Vitality. So essentially, that one I thought actually it was a mistake to do the Anubis pick because then they'll definitely just take the fucking Anubis out. Uh, uh, the, the, yeah, they definitely take the overpass out. You won't get it as the third, and you might get two zeros. The problem is, it turns out I thought Yanko was trying to like come back at me like it's a desk, and he was sort of like, "Nah, they wouldn't do that though. They never get that map." It's like, "Oh, okay, brilliant. Thank, oh, thanks for just throwing my research to the fucking bin." And then it's like, "Well, why wouldn't they?" And his reason, I'll make it very quick, was he was like, "Well, Cloud Nine always vetoes. No, he goes Vitality always ve- second vetoes the strength of the opponent." Again, because if you were just on a desk watching the game, that is the rough trend. They do change up their veto a lot. But what he was missing was, I'm not 
doing like general trends in the last map. I I've just done the deep dive. And so I told him that's not even true. One, in the last, in the RMR, they did let it go to Anubis as the third. And then two, they never, that's the only, they've only, they'd only second vetoed Anubis one time in 17 series before that. So I also just say, like, actually, the facts don't support that. Like what you're saying, all these teams can't be bad on fucking Anubis, mate. So there's, or too good on it rather. So, and basically, the problem was he was. Just, it turns out he was just sort of giving throwaway like shit post comments, and I was actually trying to have a real debate about the facts. So it was triggering the fuck out of me. I even told him to go get fucked. You know, have a look. You'll love the tweet, mate. I tell him get fucked, kid, or something at the end because I thought for real that like, he's trying to just like he's. It's like everything I say. He's like, yeah, but that's not right. It's like, well, why well, make my point? Yeah, but that's also not right. It's like, I thought he was trying to like undercut me all the time. It's like, you know what, bitch? I also brought you into this fucking world. You used to be the little cunt who just pressed mouse two on the fucking thing while I watched it. And went, what's this fucking observer doing? And the next thing you know, I'm like, you know what? Tell you what, put on this fucking, put on this old fucking janitor's blazer. Try and look a bit smart. You got your little fucking crew cut. It's like, you just stand there, dickhead. I'll do all straight fire points and straight fire amazing comments. And then the end, I'll sort of go, I wonder what they'll do on T side. And then you go, well, darling, I wonder if like they could get like some smokes going on the fucking whatever. You get the point. So anyway, I even had the talent for you. I saw you, motherfucker. I saw you in the unwashed masses. And said, see that creature there? You give it, tell you what, give him a fucking shave, put a nice suit on him, big fuck off watch with a big like green, give you that Listerine face. Get the fuck, get that shit going, you know. Go around the world a bit. Get a fucking chain that you put underneath. Go around doing th certain gestures in the world. Next thing you know, you're one of the best in the world. So I even I picked Maui Snake. I picked Assad. I picked Yanko. I even picked <laughs> Counter Strike for fuck's sake. CS:GO was shit at the beginning. Everyone told me quit, it's never go anywhere. Do League of Legends. I did League of Legends, but I stayed in CS:GO because I also picked CS:GO. So in a way, I am his follower. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. Shit? Who cares? <laughs> it's obviously not even a real take. It's, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. I just, but if you didn't know, I just did it because I thought, fuck, how many times is one of my insane? That's like if MSL won the majors. How many times is one of my bonkers picks for IGL going to win the major for fuck's sake? Do we have another yeah. take? You want to do one? Oh, no, I. I, I, I Go, right, I, go, go. I mean, no, 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 it's not a take. I actually did a, I just did a Twitter search for 2016. Anybody saying best player in simple, and it was you and just like literal random fans that there got like go. zero likes. Of course, so that's yeah, a, there you go. Yeah, no, okay. no one even really put simple okay. in the same sentence as best player other than you that whole that whole year. Okay. Fine, Maui. You that's said that he was right. I get it. Like, I just had to, I just had to check the facts. Do you want I had to one check last the facts take? of any other talent? Do you want People one said last it in 2017, though. Do you want one last no, hot take? I've got one last yeah. one for you. You're going to like this one. It's fun. Right. I saw a thing happen after this major where I realized I can never win, mate. Even when our team are really like, remember, me and Kassad picked this team. I picked this team to go to the final. I didn't think they would win, but I thought they would go to the final. Right? Actually, I had them going way better. Even though I knew, go watch any one of those videos I made. I knew it was mega sus. I knew like they have to win here and you need some performances from this guy. And obviously this guy can't choke on this map. And, and also, by the way, they got insane like things like got the right report. Even though all of that, I still had them going there. But you're going to think now, well, now they've won, the hot take's going to be, no, no, here's the hot take. This lineup of Navi will never win another LAN tournament. Mm. And here's why. So first oh, and foremost, are you ready? No, you'll see why. Alex oh, listen, no, no, no. Alexi won't have the tools, mate. He didn't. He barely had them. So first of all, Bit did nothing the whole tournament. And then in map three, Inferno... He just like remembered what 2021 was like or summer and was doing shit like run out of the apps and just like and just killed like look like you're cheating, mate. Like that never happened. The whole tournament he was a garpo. It's why it's hilarious. Simple was hogging him. It's like, mate, he almost fucking cost them the tournament. But he did that on map thing. So that, by the way, that hasn't been the bit I've been watching for months. The bit I'm watching is all right. He's just all right. He's not a star player. Then how about this? I hope I'm not gonna hurt anyone's feelings by saying I don't think GL can do a rating like this again. Listen, he's really good. That was the greatest tournament of all time. And by the way, haven't we learned our lesson for the uh, fucking Blast Paris major? That was one major and it was sick, but can he really do that? Multi That's not even who he is. Like, to me, he, in, a, in an ideal team, this is why you want simple. He'd be your third best player. If he's your third best player, you can win tournaments, right? And then you've got this. They have Matt Poole issues. Another reason why it's so crazy that they were able to get into this position is because 
they I, they almost had to draw those teams in the playoffs, or they could never have made the final, in my opinion. If they were in cloud nine spot, they start out playing against Vitality into possibly Spirit or Fit. They wouldn't even have made it at that point in time. You know what I mean? And if they'd have actually played Spirit, I think they would have like I, like always. Remember, here's how every Spirit game goes. You've all seen it. Spirit wins two maps very easily, and then Navi has to fight like they're going to actually be executed after the game, and they can barely win a game in OT or fourteen sixteen. You know what I mean? Like or thirteen eleven. Like it's so hard work for them against that team. And then you look at the draw. They got Eternal Fire, G2, and FaZe. In the same tournament, they lost to Cloud9 and Team Spirit earlier on. Yep, like, yep, yep. I even think, like, Vitality, your spirit just beats him in the final. So, essentially, I'm not hitting on Alexi at all, but, like, guys, he won by the smallest margin imaginable. Imaginable. And think about this, two factors. One, I said it earlier on, he, he won 49.5% of rounds. It was the lowest round win percentage in the history of majors. That's insane. As in, this is a massive fluke. And then secondly, I'll just say one last thing in that regard. Fuck, where was I going? There was one last thing there. Fuck, what was... Oh, this is the one last thing. This is your best day of your life. It's the best day of your career. You've just won the major. Think about it, Maui. In theory, if I win the major, I should say, that's the series you watch. That's what I'm capable of. You lost your map pick 13-2 <laughs> in the final of a major you won. Guys, that shows you right there. That, I'm not saying they can't, but I don't think this lineup will win another team. And also, low-key, meta-analysis of myself, removing myself like fucking meditation and being the person who hears the voice, not the person who identifies the story in Maui. Here's the meta-analysis of myself because I obviously want Simple to come back. So fuck it. They, they never win another lad. That, that's what I need to happen. So there you go, right? Go on, give me, give me thoughts, boys. Give me thoughts. Basically, what you're saying that, like, uh, it's going to happen first that Navi is going to change the player before they've been on another event. They just won't win event. What they'll do is they'll have the next three tournaments. They won't win. Hey, oh, yeah, you know what? Fuck, off the top of my head, they'll make a semi final, a quarter final, and they get grouped once, and then Simple will come back. It's not impossible, but I, I don't think, like, you are right about some of the players. I do think, for me. example, that obviously they have an elite IGL right now. And they have an elite opera in Wonderful. Who yeah. Is, uh, I mean, you saw what the good kid does. Like, the kid is insane. Even then, though, right. he ate Monacy and Zewu, mate. He's really good. Yeah. He ate those. Yeah. He's like the Sun Pius grade, you know. Yeah, when it yeah, comes to yeah. JL, like, he is what Config is supposed to be. Like, right there. He became what Config was always supposed to be. Like, he's that type of a player. The only thing that I wish for him is to stop talking. <laughs> it's like, like dude do you remember that used to be that was the old device bind in games do you remember that like stop talking please with like the guns out like stop talking yeah. please yeah, go. Okay. like like he goes and this, this says this a lot of this shit like stop talking you prove that you are a fucking elite player on this major that's the Bro, only thing that matters it's, it's when he, he's such a zuma brained fuck that when he won the major his only thought was to go shoo like yeah, I know, like, I know. Bro, you just, this isn't a meme. You're not in touch. You just won the major. Like, this is the moment you want to remember. Like, shoot. Like, what are you? <laughs> and, then he, and then he quickly went, oh, and also, fuck all my haters. It's like, oh, is there anything like, going on inside that fucking yeah. head? What's going on? The, the, the thing is, like, he played very good in, in Paris, right? It was sick. He did it again. He won the fucking whole thing against G2. He was the saving grace for them on that ancient. If it wasn't for him, it would be G2 all the way. Like, he played insane. And then he goes out and shits all over with fucking stupid statements. Like, it's like like you said, you, instead of celebrating, like, with the team and being like that guy, like, celebrated, he goes like, fuck the haters, fuck this guy, fuck that, fuck this, fuck that. Like, it's just relax. Like, yeah. just be the, you know, just... to celebrate. It's what, what Hooksy did. Like, I remember they won Katowice and they're fucking lifting the trophy and they're celebrating and he's yelling, Kassad, are you watching? Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here, mate? You can't, I can't lie, yeah. though. The can't lie. That, is that, that is actually dope, though. That, so this is where they don't, they'll never learn people like GL. We don't lose when you call us fucking, just fuckers who talk about the game. If you put us into it, it's why that thing, even though every time I say it now, Maui, like, sadly, it's going to sound mental. Like, I, you think I don't love that? Jail was playing with my dick in the fucking <laughs> fuck fuck. Just look it up, guy. Look up the skins. Look up the thing about the skin yeah. and the fucking. No, I had to yeah. say it that way though, didn't I? Like, oh. That's funny. Yeah, that's good. The the thing with okay, I feel like I, what's what's shocking about this take thorn that you make is that you're just copying pimp off the desk, man. No, I mean, to, he didn't say Did that. He exactly. actually he said, say I that. said something like that, though, right? He said something. He just said that they're not going to be consistent champions, and that he it, he basically said that they're not going to that they are like a top five team. Like you can see them in the yes, running, but then he's fair. like he's he's like phase vitality spirit uh, cloud nine whatever when they yes. get an offer that all these teams are in the running completely, but. 
like you don't really expect Navi to just keep winning and almost like like Pimp almost I feel like he came out with it kind of hot then he kind of almost just like softened the blow a little As bit there does. and yeah. people were flaming the shit out of him online like people were so mad at it there was a whole thread on Reddit which got deleted I think by the mods there was a there was like multiple threads on HLTV it's like why can't Pimp just be happy and it's like <laughs> no that's Pimp keeping it real that's Pimp actually being true about it because I agree I think a lot of the player performances were yeah, uns yeah. they're unsubstained they're like you can't sustain these things by the way maybe you know, that's one yeah. thing I'll quickly say as well, by the way, Maui. That's actually the one blessing about the fact E-League didn't hire me to do the Boston Major. I'm sorry, guys. I wouldn't have been a prick, but I absolutely, when they'd won on the Alice desk, would have said, like, this was a fluke. <laughs> and it would have been, like, would have melted the world down. But anyway, go on, keep going. The, 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 I mean, if I were on there, I would have been... I would have probably celebrated the moment for them as much as I sure. could have, but I but I also would have I would have probably said something similar because I, I feel like it's so unreasonable to think that without true star players yet because I mean yep that's you a could say as well. that J you could say JL and Wonderful right now in this tournament were stars I I have a hard time considering that either of them el actually elite like they wouldn't actually actually be in my elite tier they'd be in, like they have. Uh, they have actually, you know what? The only one that's elite on the team for me is the right? their in-game leader. Uh, Alexi's the only elite caller right now for them. And then when it comes to Wonderful, I'd say, yeah, he's a good opper. I'd say that JL's a really, really good role player. What's what's weird is that actually, yeah, you look at both of those, and I think Wonderful has more potential right now than JL to stick to actually get to the elite tier for me but right now i wouldn't consider him a superstar that was a discussion they actually had on the desk before oh, it started okay. where, where maniac <laughs> is already trying to li label wonderful as a superstar and it's like he's okay. definitely not a superstar at this point and i feel like that's that's where he can be but like by no means is he that yet. JL was the only person that was a superstar, but it was only this event. I've never seen him do this before. It almost like when I when I when I was going over the event, I was like, let me see what the stats were for Tarek's MVP because it felt very it felt very Tarek esque in more ways than just one yeah, right yeah. there. So I feel like Jail's gonna regress. Wonderful can improve. Maybe even Ema can improve. But I feel like Ema already throughout the five months that he's been on Navi to me reads as inconsistent more than he reads as as someone that can improve because he actually like was good that he was bad at this event in fact throughout most of the major he was pretty bad at this event and then yeah when it comes to uh bit i don't even know what's what conditions need to be met for this guy to actually turn it on like it's not it just seems like he's okay he's average he's average he's like the third best player on the team maybe and then suddenly he can go supernova so maybe that's pretty good maybe that's like a good a good way to have like like i would want my third best player to be like bit where i know he can ascend occasionally but okay back to the main point are navi gonna win a land anytime soon uh i don't see it happening i i just don't i feel like another thing that really propelled the run here for navi is that we know that blade actually is very good at game planning for big moments like he needs time remember that remember blade always saying that he needs like a, a month or two to rearrange things and if they just go on the land circuit and they have to play land after land after land that's when blade unfortunately that's when he does his worst work he really needs a lot of time to prep for everybody and put every and to fix everything and i don't i don't know if he's going to have that if they just have to go on like five events straight i have a question for you kasad yeah. If their lineups remain identical, who is more likely to win the Shanghai Major, Navi or Team Spirit? <laughs> oh, dude, that's a dish. I can't take it. He's trying so hard to find a way to sit that. How do you, the double down? Where is it? Yeah, is I, it can't, I can't. I can't. I <laughs> can't. I have to remain like loyal to my fucking brand, right? Okay. I can't be saying delusional things, right? Okay. I can't be the Lulu in the, the okay. lineup stay the same. Spirit <laughs> <laughs> is closer oh, to Oh, there you go. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. I, I just wanted to know if at the end it ended reasonable off. We just completely left the planet completely. Like, oh, well, for, oh, even though I said 49, just forget all the rules. Yeah. Spirit can never win. Fuck you. The end. <laughs>